Hello, my name is Woody. This is Change in the House of Pods, a podcast about Deftones. Today, for the season three finale, my guest is Sean Lopez of Crosses. In case you're new here, Sean is from Sacramento and goes back with Deftones to their early years, when they were poor, as you'll hear him say. Uh, They're friends. They grew up together. Like, yes, musically, of course, they cut their teeth in the scene together and all that. He toured with them when he was with Far and with the Revolution Smile and during the making of Saturday Night Wrist. And if we're talking about his musical relationship to Deftones, that's when his contributions become particularly noteworthy. He's one of the producers of Saturday Night Wrist. He recorded all the vocals, and that's just the start. And man, when we get going on that part of the conversation today, the making of Saturday Night Wrist, oof, pump that into my veins, man. That's the stuff I've been waiting for. Over here, rubbing my hands together like Birdman, and you're going to love it. Sean was also working on Eros, right up to the day of Chi's accident. You'll hear a bit about that today. And of course, he and Chino are crosses. The sexy, banging, retro-futuristic, gothy, ass-wiggling music that I just can't get enough of. And Sean and Chino were working on crosses during the making of Ohms, on the song's initiation and protection, and hopefully more. And you're going to hear about the making of protection today, That part is sick, too. And finally, at the end of our wide-ranging, career-spanning Deftones discussion, Sean decided to shed some light on the departure of Sergio Vega, the circumstances of which have felt a bit cloudy. I know a lot of people feel like it's been unreconciled, unresolved, it lacks closure. And I think what he shares here is going to help fill in the gaps for a lot of us and hopefully allow for us to make a more informed conclusion about where we stand on the sidelines, even though we're rooting for both teams here. I mean, let's keep it real. It would be nice to see everybody hug it out, you know what I mean? But I digress. In addition to the insight Sean provides, the peek behind the curtain at Deftone's two most mysterious albums, man, the personal stuff, his relationship to these men, it's just really cool to hear his reverence for them. Like, you can just tell how much he admires their talents and respects them as humans. It's, this is just a dope conversation, man. So you're going to hear it in its entirety, basically from the moment the call starts, even through a few minutes of technical troubleshooting with a, a little bit of editing for time. But because we're talking about sound and podcasts, I think all of it informs a bit about who Sean is and his values. And he said some hilarious shit. And I think all of that somehow indirectly informs us about the types of dudes Deftones are. And, well, basically because the entire two hours and 45 minutes we talked is awesome. I'm proud to share this with you today. I hope you've enjoyed season three. This is my conversation with Sean Lopez. Yo. What's up, man? You me? Yeah, I can. You sound like you're in a stadium of like 11,000 people. Oh, really? That would be a small stadium, but... Uh, Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Not a pro at this shit. I mean, it's weird. It sounds really good. We're in my headphones, so let me. Let me you got it. it. Yeah, there was just a like a a little slap back, little echo. But I think you might have gotten rid of it already. Yeah, hold on. How's it now? Uh, how's my day going? Is that what you asked? No, how's it now? Oh, how's it now? Uh, it's good. It's, it, give me, give me a check. <laughs> One, two. How you doing? Hello. That's dope. Um. Yeah, I, I guess I hate when like producers do podcasts or whatever, and it sounds like you know engineers or whatever, and it sounds like total shit. And I'm like, bro, come on, man! Like, so I don't want to be that guy. That's uh, that's really audio nerdy of you, and I, I, well, <laughs> I appreciate it. it. <laughs> well, it's sort of it, you know, it's sort of like a see now it sounds really echoey. Oh, really? To you, it does because to me it sounds pretty clean. Okay. Maybe. I mean, I, I want you to be comfortable too. So, like, don't. No, I'm, like, I'm good. It's just like a, a spoon. It's like a fucking hiss or something. Hold on, let me just right. mute. Yeah, no, everything. take take care of it. Everything else. No, I think I'm just hearing you. Maybe. Oh, really? Maybe I need to turn me down. Hearing like like air, like sounds like air conditioning or something. You'll edit that out later, right? Uh, I mean, a little bit. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I don't. While I am a little bit of an audiophile, I do think that. I mean, we're recording over Zoom, <laughs> so the uh, yeah. I think the content of the conversation will ultimately trump like I think yeah, what, me, uh, what nine out of ten people probably. Let me just think make sure time. nothing else in here. Um, sure. God, your studio is so sick. Is this your, this is your home studio? 
Yes. This is uh this it's is uh so cool in there. This is the spot. There's a lot of there's a lot of shit here. Um Okay, but but everything sounds okay, right? Yes. No? Yes. Okay. Now I'm going to be super worried when I put this out and be like shit, does Sean think it's good enough? No, no, I you know, <laughs> I've actually I've actually listened um to your to your show a couple times. Um it's been Thank you. a few episodes or something, but uh, uh it always sounds good. I mean, the Thank other you. person that you're talking to doesn't always sound good, but that's on them. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. and like I said, I, I I do think a lot of times like once you get into it, you can sort of like look past it. So yeah, it's just like a I think about when I listen to an audiobook and if the narrator, you know, the, the, the person reading is not they don't have a good voice or sure. I'm just like, oh, I can't do it. Right. Or there's like um all their S's are very uh mm. they, they're very piercing, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh I, I because I work in radio, I hear a lot of uh commercials for podcasts. Yep. And uh, I can tell who knows how to produce and who doesn't because that S is the dead giveaway. Yeah. I mean, the, like, like the goat is like a, a song exploder, you know, it's like that guy is like, everything just sounds so good. You, yeah. I mean, you feel like he's right in your next to you telling you the story, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. And on top like, of that, the content of that podcast uh, is incredible. Yeah. Incredible. I, I love it. I was um, so stunned when Gino did it. I was like, blown yeah. away yeah I, I was i was in oregon I, I was i was up there when he was doing it um and he was telling me he was gonna do it and i was like oh dude that's like that's like fucking you know whatever that's a, oh i know why it sounds weird oh now it sounds so good yeah i had my talk back on so uh, when, I, when i'm communicating with a vocalist who's you know would, would be in this this sure. room right here so it, it basically it picks up the entire room, but like heavily compressed. And then and <laughs> I just noticed that that light was on. I was like, uh, OK, it's like that all the time, too. It's right, one now, button. Now, <laughs> now, now I, yeah, now I feel comfortable. All um, right. Tight. That's what's up. Dude, uh, thank you so much. Like, like yeah, I, I, I thank you for, uh, you know, bugging me about it. And, I, and I, that, that's why I finally told you, like, hey, don't be, be don't worry about bugging me because, you know, sometimes the dms get a little wacky you know yeah yeah uh and and i just lose people they just get thrown down to the bottom or whatever totally and i and i feel like there was there was another podcast that somebody hit me up about like you know a year or a year and a half ago and i don't even remember who it was and i yeah. i didn't respond and I, I always try to like try to respond to people just because i don't know i mean i don't i mean i get a lot of messages but i don't know i don't I don't get it's part of the fucking job, man. You know, I don't know. <laughs> you think so? Is that is, uh, talk, talk about yeah, that a little bit? Because that is a different. I mean, not everybody does that. Not everybody. I think can. in this I think in this day and age. Totally. People are so like, I, I just think that I mean, whatever, if you're fucking Chino or whatever, you know, like you don't need you can do whatever the hell you want. But like, I think that it's part of the job to. Because, you know, if somebody's kind of interested in what you do, I, I guess, and then they hit you up and then they don't respond to you, but then they hit this other artist up and they hit him back. And, you know, maybe that artist has more followers or whatever, then they might be like, oh, well, fuck this guy. He's a dick, you know, like it's just kind of <laughs> I mean, I, I, I hate it. At the, I, I, I hate, a, you know, not, I hate the strong way, but I dislike a lot of things that that uh, about, you know, being in the business. But it's either get out of it or adapt, you know, like sort of, you know, yeah. learn and, and, you know, can you deal with it? And, and, you know, it's, it's just like, I think, I don't know. I mean, I, I didn't have that luxury when with my favorite artists, you know, like I would, you know, they, they would just, and, and, and in a way I kind of like that. Like, I don't, mm -hmm. I'm always afraid of meeting people that i really looked up to like i, I don't want to meet them in a way because what if they're not cool you know or what if what if i see them and you know <laughs> i mean I, I just i remember this one this is a funny story but uh i was on a flight to uh vegas you know at burbank to vegas and uh and uh i was you know i was just plane was kind of empty at when i got on there i got on there early and so you know i took a little window seat and um I'm just minding my own business, you know, whatever. 
looking at my phone and I just hear this voice and it's like, are these taken? And I, and as soon as he said it, I didn't even have to look up. I knew who it was. And it was, uh, Corey from Slipknot and him and his, him and his girl. And, you know, I just, I just, when he said that, I just heard like, I push my fingers, you know, like whatever. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, I, I like, you know, I, I like Slipknot, but, uh, but, uh, and then he sat next to me and, you know, I, I was like, whatever, you know, I don't, I mean, I like him, but I'm not like, oh, dude, what's up? Like, hey, you know, like, I'm just like, they're oh, not. Like, yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, but he was like playing Angry Birds. And I'm thinking, like, man, if I was a kid and, you know, Prince sat, ne- sat next to me on the, the plane or, or, you know, I don't know, my musical taste was crazy when I was a kid. Like, or if, you know, James Hetfield sat next to me and he was doing something like that, I'd be kind of like, oh, man. <laughs> really dog you know i mean i don't even you like, don't fuck I with angry birds no no i never have I, I don't even i don't even know what it is really but like i just knew people liked it but but you know what i'm saying like it was just kind of one of those things where i i was just like man man dog yeah yeah i feel that but uh, to his credit um uh, because i've had to uh interview or i've i've gotten yeah. to interview Corey before um he totally gets this thing that you're talking about and yeah. does and does the interview and spends the time and is super cool and very nice and uh, yeah maybe yeah. hopefully that at least redeems him a little bit in your no, eyes no i i just <laughs> i i personally did not care but i was just thinking like what if i was a 16 year old kid word and that happened would i think the same because you know when you're 16 you you have you 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 have different thoughts and you think different things and yeah i, I think that you know uh, you know, I was like when I when we did a lot of Palooza, like Cross did a lot of Palooza in, in uh, South America, and I met Perry Farrell, like who's for me is a man that is very responsible for me wanting to do music like as a job, and he was so cool and yeah. so nice and just so just like chatted me up and you know kicked it with him like what waiting in line for catering. Meanwhile, he's waiting in line like <laughs> they don't what? bring him food yeah they don't just bring like, it to perry he's just talking to all the people serving the food and i'm like man this guy is this is awesome you know like yeah. uh but if he had not been like that i would have been like oh i might have went home <laughs> <laughs> i'm probably not but you know uh so but prince would be the one you'd want to podcast with though right that that would be the one. Oh man i, I honestly i wouldn't want to meet him honestly i would i it would, it would fuck with you a little bit much huh? risk because that's like that's like my all time like that's yeah. it you know and and if i i'm gonna move my camera a little bit just so you can see oh he's yeah back. he's oh, back yeah. here he's, he's looking back over. here he's in the house like, yeah you better be saying good shit <laughs> that's right um, but <laughs> that yeah some yeah uh, shit to say. Yeah. yeah you better be um but yeah yeah i would i probably wouldn't want him um i i think we're on uh me and my wife we like years ago we went and saw the cure and they did these like special shows where they were doing like the first three albums. <clears throat> cool. And uh, I think we had a, we had an opportunity to like go back and say hello or whatever. Like if somebody, somebody we knew is working for him and we were both like, no, nah, we're good. Yeah. Fuck that. Like I just, what if he was, I don't know. You catch him on a bad day. Now, if he was playing, now if he was playing angry birds, oof, man, I, <laughs> I'm man, I might have to say something to him. Like, yo dog, come on. What if it was, what if it was Wordle? I mean, Wordle's oh, popular oh, right that now. Would be, oh, that would be even worse. Then be like, <laughs> I, I might, you know, I might go burn all my records or something, you know. But if he pulled up and he was just like playing dominoes, you'd be like, all right, this is, uh, this yeah, is yeah, yeah, that's just, you know, shit. yeah, 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 just having a pint or something, you know, just yeah. like, which you know, I think that's what he does. He just kind of has a pint, and you know, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's cool shit. Well, I mean, this is uh, a really tremendous opportunity for me to get to speak with you. Um, not only because of uh, your direct involvement with Chino, like now as a collaborator, as a creator, but for the yeah. history and the scene and everything, like there's so, there's so much, there's just so much. So again, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. This is it's so all, cool. Good, man. You, this you is know, so cool. You're doing, you're doing this for the love and, and that's cool. You know, I, I, I respect that. And I, I know you've been bugging me for a while to do it. I just, I just didn't, I don't know. It's just been at weird times where I was like, I don't, I'm not right. ready to 
you know, not not that anything I'm gonna talk about is like crazy, but like, well, it's kind of crazy, but like, I, I just, you know, I just wasn't, I just didn't feel like it was the right time. And no, that's that's totally cool. I and I even, I, I, it's funny because I even asked Chino, I was like, hey, this dude asked me to like do this thing. And I, I'm like, it's not like I'm gonna say anything bad about you or anything, but I just wanna know, like, you know, I don't wanna give it, a, like, I don't want, I, I didn't that want to do it. him be like, yo, fuck that guy. Like, I don't like, you know, like whatever, like, you know, but he was like, yeah, hey, cool. Well, that's cool. I, I, that's good to know that he didn't say fuck that guy. And I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you never know, man. <laughs> yeah, totally. Know. Totally. I mean, I, I, I sort of, um, I guess braced for the, the possibility that this could go like, it could be whack. I could put it out and it could be whack, but, um, no, fortunately, I, it feels like I've been doing, I've been talking to people who really have great stories to tell and, and I'm trying to center them. So I'm going to stop like talking about myself at all. Cause I really do. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I was, I was just, I think maybe in the, in the past when you hit me up, it was, you know, sort of like this bad clickbait, like sort of time when, you know, you know, I mean, whatever people are going to listen to this and they're probably going to try and find the most craziest thing, but like, maybe the craziest thing they find will we'll, we'll focus on will be like something that people are like, wow, that is really cool that how that happened or that, you know, this thing did that or wow. Like not like, you know, uh, I'm not on, I mean, I, I don't want to really want to be on here to like talk about like bad about people or whatever. Yeah, you yeah, know? And, and totally. there might be some, you know, some parts or whatever, but like, you know, I, I just, that's not my, I don't know. That's not my focus. Cause I don't think that really, helps anything really yeah no that's that's cool yeah i i agree because there is a there's a there's been a swath of people who have come for the peter Steele story and it's like well that's okay i guess hopefully they find something else you know what i mean hopefully they find some really good shit inside you know if if the peter Steele story gets them here even though yeah. i'm like that's a fun story but it's not it's it's not even in my top 10 favorite things that i've heard on this podcast so far so yeah that's, so that's uh, I, I i get where you're coming from i get what you're saying like um, but okay, let's, let's get into it. Cause I, I want to be uh, considerate of your time. No, um, I'm, I'm, I, man, I, I, I reserved a couple hours for you. you just in, did you, you know, really? Whatever. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, That's I, what's I, up. You know, Thank you I'm so good. much. I, it's a, I think it's better that it's a Saturday cause everything's kind of chill. Yeah. My, my phone's not going to be bugging out or anything. So yeah, that's what's up. All right. Smooth. Yeah, man. Well, uh, let's, let's start, um, as far back as we can go. Do you remember when you first heard about Deftones? I think I, I saw, I don't know, maybe a friend invited me to a show or something. And uh, I think, uh, so I, yeah, I saw, I saw them play and it, you know, immediately I, 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 I was, I was like, well, this is, you know, this is cool, you know, and, and with, with all the things that have been said, it just like, uh, wow, this guy's up there and he's screaming, but he's singing. He's got this voice. that's just different um different in in some ways but in 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 some ways i and it it was weird for me to hear in that context of these like heavy songs where i'm like thinking like dude this dude listens to duran duran you know like i just i heard i heard it something about it and and um and yeah that was it and then i think i i kind of met him maybe a few weeks after that or it's, it's hard to tell like when you know it was before they were signed or anything so do you remember and, where you saw them? Um, I saw them at this place called the Guild Theater in Sacramento, and um, and then uh, when when I when I chatted him chatted up with him uh, at it was at this place called the Cattle Club, which is you know legendary place of Sacramento, and we just like you know we just like talking about music and you know what bands we were into and you know we were into a lot of the same bands and everything and. Uh, I think I gave him like a tape or some shit. I don't know. And, and, uh, and it was just like instrumental, like music that like I had done, you know, with, with like these other two dudes, we didn't have a singer, you know? And, um, and then I think that I, it's funny because I think later on when he like years and years later, like probably not even, he's like, I remember like when I heard that shit, he was like, I kind of wanted to like sing for you guys, man. Like he was like, this shit was bad, dude. And I was like, oh man, all right, we're, you know, and then um, and then I don't know, I don't really know. I think we ended up uh, you know, we ended up, you know, getting a singer and then we we started doing shows together. And um 
and then and then somehow through that um i was actually really close with stefan for many like many years you know like uh and like maybe it's just because we were both like guitar players and so i would go pick him up like almost every day we we kick it every day like wow. i'd go pick him up at his mom's house and we would uh you know he'd jump in my car we'd usually go get some food he was poor so i would like buy him food you know and uh we would go to their rehearsal place and then me and him would just get on guitar and we would just sit there and just riff like back and forth you know and then it was almost like it was this weird like competition thing you know and then they would have a new song and then i would you know i would be like man i think he kind of took that one thing from me man like what the hell like uh you know i mean I, you know and it, but that was that was what was so like beautiful about it was that uh we were driving each other you know and it was it was this friendly like competition in a way and obviously you know they won but <laughs> you know um but it but you know that was what was cool was like but the thing was about Steph back then was that like we get my car you know and we would just like you know we were probably listening to Pantera you know like on the daily you know and that's what's up he would always say these things and he had this sort of weird uh you know uh he would he would say like uh he would he would say these things that are and to everyone and but especially me and I'd be like man you're tripping you know he'd be like ah uh, he'd be like yeah man we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna tour with these guys and I'm like get the fuck out of here you know you know what I'm talking, like what you know and then they did you know and then like he would say all kinds of things like that that were like these sort of I don't even think they were goals to him he was just like this is this is my destination is like, this is where I'm going to go, you know? And, wow. and it was just, it was really cool, you know? And, uh, and, and then I, I think I, you know, obviously they, they got signed and then, you know, we went and did, you know, tours with them after that. Yeah. We got signed after that and, you know, we did tours. So we were, you know, we were close. And then I think like, I would talk to uh, Chino a lot more and, you know, cause we always shared a lot of like the same music, you know uh, you know, we were both into, a lot of electronic music and and you know nobody else in my band was really like that so um you know we would always say back then like oh you know we're gonna do you know we're gonna do music together someday man you know and then you know it took took a lot of years but... <laughs> do you remember the uh the uh, electronic music that you guys shared uh um yeah it was just <laughs> like i mean i mean especially then it was like it was like dj shadow was like like it was like nonstop that and so it was current it wasn't like uh stuff from the 80s or no, it was, it was like 80s was... stuff too like you know craft work and uh and probably art of noise and and just like you know just like kind of like that electronic stuff that was almost like on some b-boy like type thing too like it was like break dancing stuff you know yeah um yeah man it was just like i don't know just like this weird just innocence of just like you know uh i know it's very normal nowadays for people to listen to different genres you know uh but 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 back then like it wasn't you know it was like dude do you do you like metal well then you only like metal you right. know and do you like rap then you only like rap and it was like i would i've never been like that i was like man slayer the smiths uh the cure metallica duran duran you know like all like it was just like it didn't matter it was like i don't care if it's good it's good i'm still that way i mean even worse you know like <laughs> even worse <laughs> i'm like man come on what did you think about uh steph as a guitar player back then maybe versus um versus now or is there a difference or just maybe just talk about steph as a guitar player i mean it's kind of crazy because, you know, especially with all the stuff that's been going on lately with them, you know, and uh, it's hard to think about like that, that because these do I've known these guys forever and yeah. I know them when they were poor, you know, and like whatever. And, uh, you know, it was just like, uh, lose my video. Um, it was just like, he's um, like, it's hard to think of him, but, but, but when they were talking about like, oh, you know, getting somebody feeling, I'm like, Ooh, you know like because he's like you know for what he does it's, it's weird to say this about one of my friends but like you know he's he's like a metal god you know like uh, as far as like what he does 
like i mean you know i don't know it's just it was a it's a i think he's i think he's a great player i mean he's never been like a solo player lead player but like i'm not really into that you know yeah and i think that just he you know he's always got these crazy ideas he just keeps adding strings to his guitar and shit and i'm just like well just why don't you just go lower like tune lower and then you don't need the extra string you know you know it's like a spinal tap thing the 11 but yeah but these you know these go to 11 you know and it's like uh <laughs> but um but yeah i i mean he's crazy good you know yeah. I, I i mean i you know i i wouldn't i wouldn't step into those shoes man <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's really um i think it speaks to how great lance is that that people have continued to like have a great yeah. time and do you know how how lance uh joined the team um i mean basically like we you know we we've, we've known lance for a, a long time you know he's we, we we all go back with him uh sure. and then uh i think uh it was weird because I was, I was talking to Lance, you know, quite a bit during like the pandemic or whatever. Mm. Uh, and, and I think, I think just, I don't know, just all of a sudden, like, like, Ch like Chino like was like, Oh yeah. So we're getting ready to do like, you know, some rehearsing. He's like, yeah. So I hit Lance up and just said like, Hey, you need to learn these songs, you know? <laughs> and, and I'm sure Lance was probably just tripping balls, you know? Like, right. Yeah. Um, and he's like yeah okay you know and then i mean that was basically it it was nothing they never tried anyone out because yeah. uh you know i don't think that they um you know chino i don't he didn't want to he didn't want to be his main thing was like i don't want to be on stage with a stranger which i totally get because you're only on stage for an hour and a half two hours maybe tops it's those other hours that you got to worry about, man. Sure. You know, and if somebody's not cool to hang around with, sure. Man, touring is rough when Word. that's when that's the case. You know, it's like if somebody is a, uh, like, which we'd all been around Lance enough. Like L Lance uh, was, he teched for crosses when we went out. You know, oh, and so like we, you know, we all knew he's he's chill. You know, he's a chill yeah. dude. Um. You know, we didn't. I, 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 I'm sure they, they knew that like he wasn't going to get carried away. You know, like about being, you know, the hired guy. Yeah. You know, I'm not, I'm not alluding to anything, of course. But you know, yeah, sure. I'm yeah, no, I feel you. <laughs> I feel you. Yeah. Do you want to? Are you? Are you checking out the video? I can't tell, obviously. I, so yeah, I'm like. I don't want it to be a distraction to you. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Let me check this real quick. For some reason, the, the GoPro just shut off. If we gotta live without it, it's we can live without I, it. I think I think it'll go on. Let me just let me just check this real quick. All right. That's funny that you're using a GoPro. I mean, only because um, as I work in radio, uh, all of our studio computers, n none of them have uh, video cameras. No. Yeah, yeah. Mine, mine doesn't either. That's <laughs> so that's you got to get the attachment. That's, yeah, that's why I just thought like, oh, oh, I'm gonna need to get a webcam. And I was like, wait, I think you could probably do it. With the GoPro, you know, like during the pandemic, I was like, oh, okay. Um, I don't know why. They just do the old pull the battery out, put it back in. And blow so, on it. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> like Nintendo style. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if I have to like restart the like Zoom or something. Because now when I hit start video, it's like doesn't even do anything. Even oh, though I'm seeing that the camera's working. If you want, right, if I pop disconnect, out and pop in. Yeah, I'll you. Pop I'll, out, pop back I'll in. keep the. I'll keep the meeting open. Yeah, cool. Yo, there he is. Perfect. Okay. Still, yeah. still sound cool. Yeah, everything sounds uh sounds Smooth. the same. All right, thanks for doing that. It's anyway. nice to look at you and your dope ass room. Yeah, yeah. I just, I didn't want to, <laughs> I didn't want that to break up the flow. Yeah, no, that's what's up. So, um, you got to know Steph, and you got to know chino and there there was uh some foreshadowing in those early conversations um yeah. what about uh what about chi what tell, tell me about chi um man like just a, a rad dude always like joking around just like you know he was more like the, the the sort of like hippie dude loner you know kind of guy you know and uh 
but man, I, you know, I have so many memories of that dude. Just like, you know, I mean, back to even screen printing. Cause I, back then I was like, I've, I've always been like DIY, like dude, you know, like I'll learn. You're a hardcore dude, aren't you? You, you were a hardcore yeah, yeah. dude. Yeah. So, yeah. so I'm, I, I printed these early t-shirts that they had, um, where we, we did it at cheese apartment. And, uh, so I, I, you know, I brought my, my goods over, you know, like, like my inks and whatever. And they had some blank shirts and we did these, uh, we did these shirts and like I was baking them. I learned how to like bake them in the oven. So like the ink would stay on there. And, uh, I mean, that was just funny because I still have a couple of those shirts too. It's kind of crazy. Which, which shirts were they? I, I mean, you've probably never seen them. Word. Yeah. Like I'll, I'll send you a picture. It's it, like, like, I mean, I, I know like, I'm really good. I've always been really good at it. You know, maybe it's because like I'm like, you know, I, 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 I sort of have the pack rat like vibe in me, but like, <laughs> I, not like only with certain things, but I like, I, I just held on to like a bunch of shirts that I had back in the day. So like, I've, you know, I still have like the first Deftone shirt they ever made, you know, oh, which man. I made the second, I made the second batch, which is the, those were the ones that I printed. And uh, yeah, so we, I think we did like a couple dozen of them or something. Um, what, and, were the, uh, what were the, what did they look like? What was on? What was the, what was the shirt? It was just the low. It had the logo, like some kind of lame logo that they had back then, just on the front, and then on the back, it was the same logo, just smaller. Um, but you know, it's cool. Like, and around that t- around that same time, like they, they, I remember they made these stickers that were just, just terrible, man. Like it was like the Chevron logo, but it said like Deftones, but it wasn't even done well like oh man so and and about what year was this do you have some idea some recollection i, dude, I have no idea I mean, <laughs> it's been a while yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That's, that's cool no i'm just kidding um, but yeah yeah so it's like all, all those sort of memories are, are, are so cool and, and and i mean even um one of one of the last funny memories i have of, of, of you know of chi was uh because for some reason he always tried to punk me out like just like but it was always like friendly in a way we're like you know like uh i remember i oh yeah i was i was i was going to, i was walking in this restaurant in sacramento it was a restaurant they used to he lived above it in in the uh you know the condos up there or whatever and it was right around the time um that revolution smile got signed and you know we signed with fred durst and and so i walk up to him i was like hey man what's up dude and he's like where's your pony track suit, bro? You know, just kind of, and I was like, oh, <laughs> and then he's like, he's like, Oh man, what's up, man. You know, just like, it was all good after that, but he just Word. had to throw that in. And, uh, you know, we, we just kicked it for a little bit, you know? And then, uh, and then I remember later, like, this is kind of funny. Cause this is like, you know, when they started making Saturday night wrists, which was at the, uh, the Malibu house. And I, and I, I'd gone out there just like hang with them. For the day and uh i went out there and i had some like hoodie on like some zip up joint or something and he's like he like pointed at me and he's like you got that at urban outfitters didn't you like kind of like trying to call me out like i bought something urban, and he's i'm like uh yeah and he's like i don't worry about it i got the same one <laughs> <laughs> you know but like just you know just little things like that you know just like uh he's just you know he was just such a a a rad dude you know definitely definitely have good memories man you know never never had a i don't have any bad memories with him for sure you know even when he was punking you out it's just like you just want to hug him you know just a good dude that's really cool that's special that's really cool yeah yeah and what was abe like back in the uh in the old days i mean yeah he's always i feel like he's always just kind of been like how he is he's a fucking weirdo man like <laughs> but in the best way man you know i don't know it's just like uh i guess a, a memory i have of Abe was like uh I'm, you know i know we're probably jumping ahead here but you know uh, uh at some point in the in the saturday night wrist like when i was on the record you know uh they brought me on the road to try and finish vocals you know, like the, the label, like flew me out and, you know, and, you know, we didn't get nothing done. Just, it just, it was a, you know, it was a waste, you know, and yeah. I was just basically on a bus 
chilling, you know, with, with my gear in the back lounge and, you know, not, not much happened, um, which I get it, you know, it's kind of hard to do that. Um, yeah. With that many people on the bus and just, just everything shows and whatnot. But <laughs> one of the funniest things was like, um, you know, Abe, Abe always has, he travel like he travels, like, you know, they all have probably their like wardrobe cases and whatnot, yeah. but his like wardrobe case is like, he just got like gadgets in there, like, like almost like disguises. He's got like tons of weird sunglasses and wigs and, and like masks. And it's incredible. Like the, the man has, he's got the collection. So I, I was, it was the day that I was flying out. We were in Milwaukee and um, I was flying out in the afternoon. So I, I woke up in the morning and uh, it was on like a, they were on like taste of chaos or something like that. Uh, and, and I had a bottom bunk, I believe. And, and he had the bottom bunk next to me. So I kind of like, you know, whip my curtain open, kind of just like looking out just kind of waking up and he whips his curtain out like open. And I kid you not, dude is wearing a full on like geisha wig, you know, like a geisha <laughs> girl. And I, and I just looked at him and I was like, I was thinking like, am I, am I still sleeping or like what? And he's like, I was like, yo, what's up? And he's like, life's hard for a geisha girl. And then he got up and we went to breakfast and he wore it like the whole time. No way. Yeah. So that's just, you know, that's just, my man is, uh, he's, Oh, he's, that's wild. He's always fun. Dude. I bet the people in Milwaukee were tripping. Yeah. Yeah. It was, <laughs> it was weird, man. They were like, who is this cat? Yeah. Oh, that's super funny. That's super funny. And do you remember when you first met uh, Frank? Um, man, I mean, it was probably on tour, um, probably in the UK uh, Word. when we went like that, because I think that was like the, f- I, don't, I, mean, I think it was the first stop on that tour um, was, was, was somewhere in the UK. And, um, you know, I, I, I'd never really known that they had this other dude in the band, like, you know, by then. Um, But uh, yeah, I mean, I met him then and, you know. Is this when like you were touring with the Revolution Smile? No, Far. Oh, that was with Far. Really? Okay. Yeah. You know, and that was their, that was their first time over there, you know. Oh, word. You guys were on the first tour. Yeah, we were were on that tour and, you know, first time in UK, first time in, you know, we went all over Germany, France, everything. And it was, it was, uh, it was super exciting, you know, I mean, especially for them like that, like, you know, that was all of our, that was the first time we'd ever been out of, I mean, pretty much out of Sacramento, you know, Word. you know, so it was, it was pretty, it was pretty crazy to just like get there and there's already kids there at like two in the afternoon. And, and it was, you know, it was, it was much more back then, I think, you know, cause you know, you didn't have like, all the stuff we have now, you know, how do you mean like the internet and you can't, you, I mean, that was, you know, you couldn't just go and look and see what your favorite artist was doing today. You know, like a lot of artists, you could just look up and just, you know, where they are because they already posted today and they're tagging where they are, you know, it's just like it, you know, it was a different time. And, yeah. and I think it's cool, but I, I like the way things are now too, you know? So sure. I don't really, it's just sort, sort of about adapting, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's different. I would imagine. And, and that was far uh, your first time touring uh, overseas as well. Yeah. 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 Wow. And we, I mean, we, our record wasn't even out over there yet. And, but, but kids had bought it on import or something and, you know, like, no way. Yeah. It was crazy. That trip you out. Totally, man. Like it was, it was wild. Was there ever a point where you were like, Holy shit. Like, was that the Holy shit moment where you're like, damn, we're, we're really doing this. Nah, I don't, I don't think I felt that then, you know? Um, yeah. I, yeah, I just, it, I don't know who knows what was going on then it, within our band, you know, might've been, there was probably something weird going on, some weird feelings, you know? Yeah. Um, but it was, it was super exciting. You know, it was, yeah. re- it was really exciting that like, I felt like I made my like family proud and everything. And that's, that's always been just, you know, that's always what you want to do, you know, yeah. like, the people that brought you into the world, you know, like you want to like, you want them to, you know, you want them to be like, cool, you know, you were like, Oh man, like yeah, you're doing it, you know? And it's like, 
I think, you know, I, I think nowadays people have a, a perception of things, especially with like social media of like, you know, uh, like people just, you know, people like that, that aren't, don't, don't work in music, but maybe we're in bands before, uh, you know, back in the day. And if I go to Sacramento, they're like, man, you're, you're killing it, bro. Man, I just see you, man, you live in the life. And I'm just thinking, man, you don't know, like, <laughs> this is not, it's not all of what you see, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not easy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It takes a lot of uh, practice and preparation to put together that final product that you present to the, to the world. It takes a yeah, lot. Of yeah. And it's, it's, it's like, you have to, to be able to do music, especially nowadays, like you really have to love it more than anything, you know? Yeah. And, and, and you know, I think, I think anyone who does it always feels like they are like, what, what am I doing? Like, I feel like, you know, you go through those moments, like, you know, several times in the year, we're like, what, what the hell am I doing? Like, <laughs> you know, especially during a pandemic, you know, it's like crazy. Word. Did you feel that way back then? Like when you were, I don't know, I, I just in, in the nineties and the mid nineties, yeah. when you're, when you were climbing, uh, trying to, trying to break. Uh, I think because because like you have that youth, you know, and you're just like you're so fearless in a way, you know, and I think that, um, you know, once you once you get older and you start having responsibilities, mm. you're, I think you're not as fearless in a way, you know, and I think that's that's something about being a kid that is is such a magical time that like kids don't care, like they don't care. Like, that's why, like, but, you know, me and my friends would go and skateboard and like grind handrails and like like drop off of like loading docks i'm like do you think i would do that now hell no i'm like man i got health insurance but i don't know if i got that much health insurance right yeah i live in the u.s bro yeah <laughs> for real <laughs> and anymore i go up the stairs and my hip starts talking to me <laughs> i know tell it telling you man so yeah it, it i think there is you know something to say with that like you know it's uh it, it can be good you know yeah so I'm um, thinking back to the uh, those days touring. Um, I mean, you you probably you've probably seen Deftones then like thousands of times. How, how, like how many performances possibly stand out in your mind? It's hard to like ask you even that. Like what what's a special <laughs> what's a special show that you remember or anything? But um, do you do you have some some uh, memories of Deftones performing that that uh, that stand out in your mind? Um, man, I'd like to say, yeah, but I, I, it, I've seen them so many times that, you know, uh, it's, it's, uh, I do, you know, there, there was one show that, um, was in Paris and it was when we were on tour with them and they, I remember they played a really long set, you know, and it was in an arena, like it was like a, you know, probably 15,000 or something like that you know, fully packed and they played a really long set and they played, I think they played a lot of songs that they don't normally play. And I just remember, cause I remember just, you know, I just remember them look like they were just having like the time of their lives up there. And that, that's probably what I remember most. It was like, of, of like seeing that show was like, man, these, it just felt like, man, these guys are really at the bottom of it. They're, you know, they're really good friends, you know? And, and that was, that was cool to see, you know? Yeah. That's really cool. And they, and they played well too, you know? So. Yeah. Yeah. That helps. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it helps feel uh, I would imagine just to, to keep, uh, keep a performance going. Like, yeah, we're, we're, we're tight. We're, yeah. Yeah. We're knocking these songs down. That's, that's what's up. What do you think it is about? Cause that's uh, their, their live show is, is it's electric. Um, what, what do you think, where, where does that come from? Where, where does that, is that just that, uh, that youthful, like fearlessness that created that, that animal or, uh, cause I know there's gotta be some amount of practice. They weren't always great. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I mean, the fact that they, they still go out and they, they can still put on a show. I think, um, you know, I, I probably a lot of that is, is, I won't say a lot cause it's, I'm not, I'm not trying to take stuff away from the other members but i i think i feel like chino's so critical of everything other mm -hmm. music other musicians that 
he's uh, maybe maybe he's speaking to himself in a way you know maybe like maybe he's uh maybe he's critical on himself at the same time so you know it's it it, it which i'm i'm the same way you know i uh if uh, you know i think that because i think that he knows how critical deftones fans are or, or chino fans period that Word. you know and i think it's probably annoying sometimes but um but but I think that the they almost like you know a lot of those fans are they've invested so much time and so much money into them that they in a way they kind of have the right you know to be critical you know um, and I think I think I don't know I think people should be called out for putting out a whack album or whatever you know I I, I think you shouldn't go in and make lazy albums, you know, and, and just, and expect people to just be like, Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I'll take it. You know, I think it's important. I think it's important to be humbled, like as, as an artist, you know, like as a, as a band or whatever, uh, because otherwise it's like, you know, I don't know. You're just surrounding yourself by yes, men and all that. It's like, that's not going to help. That's not going to help you, you know? Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I love reading bad comments in a way. Word. I mean, not, I mean, I don't love it, but like <laughs> they, I don't know. They, they, um, I, I just like to see the people like, you know, I mean, obviously if they're real comments, not like, oh, you're ugly, you know, you're yeah. fucking fat, like whatever, like, like, I like to see like, well, I feel like this is you know, whatever they might be talking about crosses or something be like, Oh, I just feel like the production's too slick or whatever, you know? like, I, yeah, I'll, I'll hear that. I don't get offended by it, you know? Yeah. Cause I, I personally, I don't, I don't put anything out that I don't stand behind. You know, I don't, I don't want to phone anything in ever, you know? Uh, I put a lot of care and time in, into finishing stuff. So like I, so people can say what other, whatever they want, I guess, you know, and that's, they have the right to that opinion, but I'm not, I don't get my feelings hurt about it. Really? I, d yeah. I don't, I mean, just allow it to inform you in, in the weird way that it, yeah, yeah. it's like, Oh, okay. That's interesting. That you said that like, okay. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, I mean, I know Chino might be different in that way. Um, and, and I, I guess I would understand because it's his voice, you know, it's a little bit more of a personal instrument. Mm. Um, but I'm not, I'm not like that. I, I mean, you know, maybe just, I, I don't know. I just, I feel confident about things when I, when I do them and put them out, you know, and the stuff that I'm not so confident about is probably, it's not coming out, you know, like, yeah. I, uh, I, you know, I mean, it hasn't always been like that, you know, but, but um, I think nowadays I, I'm just like, I don't know. I just have a better frame of mind about it, I guess. It does being a producer, make like bring that out of you because there's got to be some um some uh big picture qualities that that brings right the some some things where you really have to look at the things from a thousand feet or or whatever like is that yeah um, yeah and i think i mean just just sort of touching you know on you know being aware of stuff i mean when we were when we were doing these uh you know doing all this new music and you know, when we put out those last two songs, um, when, when I was, you know, when I was finishing up the production on those and preparing them to be mixed, I went back and I listened to the album and I don't think people do that enough because I was, I probably did that because I was probably questioning myself a little bit. Like, does this hold up? Is this good enough? Is this, you know, like, and I think it was good for me to like do that, you know, mm. and I don't think not, not that I want to copy what we did before, not at all, but I want it. I want to, I just, I want it to give me that same feeling that the album gave me, you know, just like, so I think, you know, and it's up to, obviously it's up to the public to judge if it was, if you were successful. Yeah. 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 And, and I can't control that. But as far as I, as far as I'm concerned, I was like, yeah, like I, I feel good about this, but I think it's, I think it was good to listen to that. And, you know, uh, 
because I think that was one of the conversations that I had with Chino was just like, we're talking about the songs and we we're having some, you know, kind of back and forth about like the production. He's like, oh, I just, you know, I don't know. I don't know if it sound, needs to sound like this part right here. And I was like, well, you know, I went back and I listened to the album, which I, you know, I didn't think I would do, but I did. And, you know, some of those songs on the album have like kind of big sounding choruses. And I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to not think about that. I want to be aware of that. I don't want to copy it, but I want to be aware of it. And I don't want to, uh, I don't want to put something out that seems like demos for the, the bigger thing, you know, mm. so I was just, you know, it's just a little back and forth that we have, but, but, you know, we figured it out. It's really fun to think about you guys bringing this, uh, this idea to life 20 plus years later. Yeah. Um, well, although I guess it, it was what 2000, it was the early tens. Yeah. Yeah. I started doing crosses. Yeah. Yeah. Like 2012, probably something like that. That was a really hyper productive time for Chino in particular doing, mm-hmm. uh, doing all of that music. Did that, uh, I mean the, the two Deftones albums, Diamond Eyes and Koi. Yeah. And then um, Palms wasn't far off of, of crosses either. That's really yeah, I think it was, yeah, maybe a little bit after, maybe? A little bit after, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, was there any uh, part of the, um, or has there been any part of the creation process, the collaboration process, where you're just like, um, I don't know, not critical or not thinking in a producer way, and you're just sort of like, wow, this is like, this is dope. Like, we're making this fly shit. Like, in, and just in, like, what is, what is, what is the making of uh, crosses like music yeah, like when i mean you're collaborating yeah i think i think for you know probably having that sort of thought was um you know one of the songs we released a little while ago that, uh which was uh protection um that's probably the newest song that we've written and we wrote it I mean, well, I had the the main loop thing and I was just like going through some stuff, which Chino's here. I'll just go through some little sketches or whatever. And I, and that was one I played and he's like, oh, what's what's that? What's that? I was like, oh, this is a little thing I made. He said, oh, that's hot. That, that sounds like some construction time, Depeche Motors. You know, he had some th- like thing about it. And he's like, oh, I'm, I'm going to go in the booth, you know, and then he went in. He basically laid out the melody pretty much how it is like first take like the the mount there, no, there was no words and and then we just we just sat there that the that almost like the rest of that night just listen oh because it was just the loop and then he was like uh and this is this is the thing is that like it's so much easier for us to make full songs when we're together when i'm emailing him stuff it's like you know it's here and there it's it's sometimes it's great but sometimes it's just like I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, first, I'm trying to like make something that I like, but I'm also in the back of my mind thinking like something that he's going to want to sing on. So I'm trying to yeah. read his mind through, you know, totally. the, the waves of the world or whatever. So, yeah. but that was one that came really quick. So we had the loop basically and he went and laid the vocal and then he was like, uh, he's like, well, yo, what if we did some snaps? Like, like on, you know, he's like, you know that one Art of Noise song? And I was like, I already knew what he was talking about. I was like, oh, yeah, I know. He's like, I'm like let me make that real quick. I was like, I, I know I know how they made those snaps. You know, like I already, I already in my head, I already knew. And then I, I like just did it. And then, and then for like, and then, you know, we just, a- I added a little bit more stuff, like some bass and stuff. And then I feel like for the rest of the night, we just fucking like listen to that shit on loop. Like we were just like. You know, this shit feels good and we did like you know we made this like really quick so it just uh and then you know it just came around to like um yeah and then it was just about getting like the lyrics done and then and then tracking it you know um i mean there is some of the song there are parts of the song that are are straight from the first take when he went in and did it no way really yeah like the the the, the um uh, what is it the the middle part when he's like hold me baby that's from like the first take that's from the and and he came out and he's like man 
I don't think I've ever said baby in a song before. He's like, and I'm like, but yeah, dude, it feels, it feels good though, man. Like that's, it just, it's, it, you know, but that was like first take. And I think when we, when we actually tracked real vocals, like he, he sang that part again, but there was something about that first like time he did it that was it was just it was the vibe i'm like that nah, we're, we're, we're keeping that shit that's so cool yeah I, I love shit like that i mean i love like you know even when i work with other people of like if if the demo ver- like vocal is great why i mean what what are we doing here yeah kind of just match what you have already did like let's just eq it and like get going you know yeah yeah, that's cool. That that probably takes a lot of practice to identify that, to be like, nope, that's the feeling. And yeah, we're yeah. here. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, because some people would probably be like, oh, no, we have to redo it because that's the demo. It's like, well, demos don't really exist these days, you know? Yeah. It's like, Interesting. if you're, you know, if you're recording with somewhat proper gear, it's like, I mean, there's no demo. Yeah, you're chilling. Yeah, you're already there. Yeah. That's cool. That's really cool to think about. And and um, I know I mentioned this to you before. I'm really interested to hear uh, your insight into just recording Chino and why he thinks you're like so good at it. Or what, I don't remember exactly what it is or how he articulated it, that there was something about maybe recording uh, in your studio or just with you or what it is. What is that quality that you provide that that creates um, this opportunity for him to be at his best? Yeah, I mean, I it's funny because I I when I when I go back to think about like when I started doing like Saturday Night Riffs and you know and how that came about was uh you know kind of a long story, but you know, uh it's a podcast, we got time. <laughs> I, I just I just I just made this place and it was very I mean it wasn't all this, you know, it was it was very it was like a desk and a small little rack with some gear. And, a, and I just like gotten like a new mic, which is the mic I still have today. Oh, and, uh, and, uh, it was new year's Eve and he, you know, he was in town. He was staying at the, this little bungalow of this area of, of, of a bunch of little a bungalow like places. And, uh, and I don't I, know why and, I'm thinking of dirty dancing for some reason. I don't yeah. know why. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, kind of like that. Uh, but, uh, it was, and I, I think we had maybe gotten dinner maybe one night or maybe a couple nights and, uh, just kind of checking in, you know, it's not like we talked a lot, but when we would meet up, it was just like, it's all good, you know? Yeah. Like, um, so, uh, on new year's, I think, uh, me, my wife and some, some other, like, a uh, uh, few other friends it was new year's and we went to went to see dredge play a, a new year's show at the roxy and um cool and one of my friend's wives was pregnant so she was driving so it was like you know game on yeah <laughs> uh, as as you would um Green light. And, uh, and um you know i was you know i was i had some beverages and I think I had some kind of medication too. It was kind of like making me act a little funny, but uh, so we go and then like, so Chino hits me up. I was like, Hey, so Mars Volt is staying at the place here and they have like a big house and they're having a party. You guys should roll through. I was like, all right, cool. By the time we got there, I was, I was good to go, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and um, we, so we went to Chino's like little thing, you know, his little bungalow or whatever first. And he was like, I was like, yeah, so how's, how's the, how's the record going? He's like, Oh man, I, you know, I don't know. I'm just like, you can't, you know, whatever. And somehow my, you know, I had, I had liquid courage going. So I was like, I was just, and, and I don't even remember saying this, by the way, this is him saying what I said. Okay. <laughs> this is him. I, I don't remember saying this at all. I mean, I, I might've, I might've not even said this, but according to him, he remembers it well. And he was like, He's like, you don't remember? He's like, he, he was like, you were like, bro, I just got a new mic. I'll, I'll make you sound better than anyone. And he's like, and dude, I believed you. And, and I'm like, I didn't say that. And he's like, yeah, no, no. He's like, dude, you said that. 
And I was like, well, when I, when I kind of think about like how I was that night, cause I remember like after that, we went to the Mars Volta house. And at some point I just remember I was in like the basement with like, uh, uh, Cedric and, uh, Omar. And I just remember look, you know, cause I'm a gearhead, uh, you know, and they had this table of all these vintage guitar pedals. It was like a huge table, but like, they must have had like a thousand and I was tripping. I, I, I was like tripping like I was on acid or something. I was like, oh my God, I can they have this one and they have this one and like, you know, whatever. And I'll, you know, I'm, my wife and my friends were laughing at me. Like, so whatever. So, you know, we ended up going home, whatever. And then, uh, and then, yeah. And then, and then a couple nights, like, and he's like, oh, I'm going to, um, maybe I'll come, he's like, maybe I'll come through, like, he's like, because I'm working, um, I th- he was working with some guy, like, on vocals then, like, I think his name was, like, James or something, okay. um, and he's like, oh, you know, we usually work in the day, so maybe I-, I come through at night, and we can just kick it at the studio, and he came through, and he's like, you know, we just, like, kind of steal what we do to this day, he just comes through, and we just, like, listen to music for a while, and, like, whatever, and then, uh, and then, yeah, he was just like, uh, at some point, um, he was like, well, he's like, I want to play some of this new deaf, like new deaf tone shit. And like, just tell me what you think, like, whatever. And, uh, and, you know, he played me some stuff. That, you know, it was all instrumental. And I was like, oh, this is, this is sick, dude. Like, you know, like whatever. And he's like, what would you do on it? And I was like, I, I was, I was kind of like, uh, like I, I i'm like i i, I don't I, I don't know like i mean i was just like i was like not prepared for that you know i was like very early on in producing stuff like i'm like you know they're working with all these big producers i'm like i, I don't uh, uh, what what and he's like no no what would you do on it and so like I, you know bro put me on spot you know and i'm like well so i start like kind of like singing something but it's like he's like no but that sounds like some some shit i was singing like, what would you do? And I'm like, uh, uh, well, I would, I hear you on this. Like, I don't, you know, I, that, so that's what I, I'm going to gravitate towards. And then, and then at some point he's like, yeah, but let, 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 let me, let me go in the booth and try a few things. And then he, he tried a few things and, you know, I, I had comments like right away, like, oh, what if you did this? And, you know, I think one of the first songs we did was Hole, Hole in the Earth. And, uh, and I remember like he sang the, there's a hole in the earth part, but he only said it once in the song. And I was like, no, that's, that's, that's the hook right there. Like, that's the, like, you need to say that more, you know? And, um, and then he, like, I think he came back through maybe the next night and maybe the night after. And we kind of just kept sort of going on shit. And then, and then I think something happened with that other dude that he was working with during the day. Cause he called me one day and he's like, Hey, this dude just like left town. And like bailed. and he he was like he was kind of tripping, you know. Yeah. And I was like, well, dude, like bring all your shit, bring the hard drives over, let like let's go. And he's like, oh, for real? I was like, yeah, like let's let's go, like dude. We I mean we've been kind of doing this every night anyway. Like what, what? Like why not? I mean, fuck, I don't even know. I I don't even know what. I don't even know what kind of courage I had to say something like that. Just like, I, I, I got this, you know, like, yeah. So, um, so we started doing stuff and, and, and by the time, like sooner or later we had like three or four songs, maybe like done. Wow. And, um, and then all of a sudden, like, then he's like telling his label and his management. Yeah. My homeboy. Yeah. My homeboy Sean, I'm, I'm working on the records record for them, and they were probably like, "Hold the fuck up, <laughs> like, <laughs> we're coming by." Word. So, next thing I know, I got like you know, the management here, fucking Guyo series here. No the, way. The, the, their, their, their other their A and R at the time, and I'm just I'm like, I, I'm not ready. For, you know, I'm not. Where'd ready. their courage go? <laughs> yeah, I'm not ready for this. You know, I'm like, I'm like, you know. I mean, nowadays I'd be like, yeah, whatever. Right. I was going to come through. I'm, I'm good with it. But like, but back then I'm just thinking like, I'm, I'm pretty, you know, fresh in this. So, uh, it was a trip, man, to just all of a sudden it was like, 
because they came by and they heard we play i think we played them like two or three songs and they were all just so like everyone was so excited they're like dude whatever you're doing just keep going word and you know because i think they were they were probably scared i mean i, I don't blame them especially when he's like yeah my my, my homie sean you know because that's that's how that's, <laughs> that's how, how he did talks. it like i could have been in you know the ceo of a fortune 500 and if i was his friend he'd be like oh yeah my homie you know my homie gates yeah yeah yeah, yeah. My, yeah. My, yeah you know my homie bc you know bg over here you know but uh so so yeah we started um yeah we just started that i mean that's that's pretty much like how that started it was and at that point um you know he didn't really have a there wasn't like a lot of communication with management and the label i i and i don't i mean i honestly i, I probably don't blame them they were kind of just like you know what what the fuck do we do like right. Cause at that point they had been, I think they'd been with, uh, you know, Bob Ezrin. Mm -hmm. Uh, then I think at some point, uh, I think they did some shit with like Dan, the automator. There was this James guy That's that he right. was with. That's right. Then I, I feel like at some point it, he went back to Terry and then it was James was like the last guy to work on it, but like they literally had no vocals done. Wow. And for some reason i don't know if it was just because i was a friend we were able to get something done you know i was i was a friend but i was also like and i've always been this way with him and i think it's the way everyone should be i want people to be that way with me um i was always i've always been honest with him i've never like i'm never going to tell you i'm not going to tell him everything he does is great because everything he does is not great everything i do is not great right. there's no artist that every everything prince did wasn't great I mean, sorry, you know, sorry, Prince, but, you know, most of it was great. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> like 99 percent. I mean, yeah. you could do Purple Rain and just cash out. I'm yeah. good, you know, but like um, but I'm saying like I've never, you know, and I've, I think I've learned it's, it's another part of being producers like is, is learning. Learning when somebody is sensitive about certain things and then just like how how do you tell them, you know, hey, you can do better. Hey, that part you wrote is not the part, you know, like, it's just about learning that. And, and I think that, um, it's easy to think when someone's this like big star, you know, I'm not even talking about Chino. I'm just talking about anyone. It's easy to think that like they can take criticism no matter how you put it. And that's, that's completely false. You know, I think you have to be sensitive about, Hey, how do I tell this person they're great, but also tell them that part they did right there is not it you know yeah and yeah. i think that like um in some ways i don't know i mean maybe maybe that was appreciated that i was that i was you know just upfront about stuff you know um and then you know i mean that you know that record took a long time to make obviously you know yeah. i mean even after i was involved it took a long time yeah how do you remember um was that because they were both going on the road and or like what what was the i know the band was super fractured at that time yeah yeah they were fractured and and i think that like um you know uh when we started off when we got like a few like three or four songs done it was like that was like what i consider like the honeymoon period Word. and then the reality hit in and like then it was just like you know just typical things just like he started not showing up and I'd be here by myself and then like, and then I'd call him on it. Like, bro, if you're not going to show up, just let me know. And we're good, you know? And it's like, it's fine. But like, he was going through a lot then, you know? Yeah. And, and that's cool. And, and it's, it's, you know, but I, I've always been the person to just be like, Hey man, just let me know, man, we're good. You know? And we, you know, we still have those kinds of things, you know, we're just like, we're, we're, you know, we're, we're brothers in, 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 in some sort of weird way that like, but I, I think that, you know, it went through a period where like, I was like, oh, and then, you know, I don't, I don't think, I don't know if the communication just wasn't good with management and stuff, but like, it was, you know, it was just, it was a hard situation to wrangle. And in the end we did, you know, and, and, uh, but it was crazy. I mean, that was like, everyone had like kind of given up. Yeah. Yeah. 
but and yet here we are like talking about this album that is like so revered and and it's got i feel like it's not not, not at the time no no not at the time and, and i <laughs> think at I, the time i mean people were mad at me and saying that Word. like they should go back and like, bob they should take bob's version i was like man you kids because that's the thing about deftones fans and i'm sorry but motherfuckers think they know everything Word. and that's that's why sometimes i just uh, like yeah you guys don't know nothing like yeah. you know so it's like and maybe you know i think back then i might have said something about like the self-titled record i might have made a comment about like that i didn't i didn't care for that album like when it came out like whatever but and i probably shouldn't have said that <laughs> but because people take like, it and they run with it oh yeah yeah i mean that was that was like og clickbait bait back then but like Word. but now now thinking about that i love that record and 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 coming from white pony that's the perfect record for them to make Why? like honestly because it was not white pony it wasn't trying to be white pony but it was fucking that, that record i mean production wise and engineering and mixing wise that record sounds incredible you know yeah. like terry just knocked that one apart man would you like, please talk about terry date a little bit as as you are a producer i think it would be so enlightening to talk about what makes terry date so successful um you know i i've been around him several times you know just with with, with deftones and you know i mean i remember i remember going to visit them in the studio when, with white pony when they were making that uh you know whatever going to dinner with like nicest dude super chill like whatever the man is a genius at engineering like like the, that thing he does is like still to this day it just it just nobody else can really do it i i don't know I, I feel like nobody's ever really done it in that way um and i think he's you know he's he's captured these bands at these perfect moments mm -hmm. of the band is on fire and all he needs to do is capture it and stay out of the way and that's that's actually a part of of, of, a, of a of a great producer is knowing when to stay out of the way and just let whatever's happening let it happen and just and just make sure and capture what's happening you know it's like not about putting your stamp on it and oh i gotta put my terry date stamp on it or you know my sean lopez stamp like what it's not about that it's like like because nobody cares about your stamp they care about the band you know and if the band does good then you do good, you know? Totally. But dude is like, man, he's a legend. Straight up. That's cool. That's really cool. Because, I mean, it, like you said, uh, fans have a lot to say, but they also do have a like, heap praise on Terry Date. And I'm not as any, like, I'm not even close to being sophisticated enough or smart enough about what I'm hearing to to understand that. So it's really cool to hear you talk about, um, you know, yeah. what's, not, what he's... Not, what he's nothing, but, nothing but ultimate respect there like yeah. dude is man so did you do all the vocals for saturday night wrist is that was it yeah. all like yeah and that wow yeah um yeah and we did you know we did them all here and uh and you know i think we've like maybe added added some some guitars and stuff like that um but a lot of it was rearrange like rearranging the songs too like kind of editing them down um and after that all that happened i felt like i felt like some some sort of tension from steph so it was almost like to a point where like i was afraid to like even be around him like it was like oh, i felt like he hated me but i'm sure a lot of that was just in my head you know sure, sure. um but you know it's all good you know, was that for like arrangements that you might have changed or something like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we we, we just yeah. cut time, we just cut time out of songs because it's like they're too long, you know. Oh, um, Lord. Really interesting. I mean, I mean, that, and that wasn't really even me per se. It was like you know, it's just the overall feeling in the room of just me and Chino. Sure. But yeah. Interesting. It's really fun to think about how that record ultimately came together. Like the life of a song is interesting, but the life of an album is really fascinating too. Like, and, yeah. and what it took to make it. Is yeah, like, no, it was, man, it was, it was, it was crazy, you know? And then just like, and then, you know, getting it mixed where, 
they were on the, they again went back on the road and then I was, I was pretty much brought in to serve as a band member during the mix, which this guy, Ryan Williams mixed it, um, which was an amazing opportunity for me because I learned so much from Ryan, like watching him mix the record and like, and he was just very cool about like, Oh yeah, you see how I did this. It's like, you can really do, you know, like it, it really, it can help this, you know, it can help the drums blend with the bass and like, you know, just like stuff like that, which was just like, I mean, I should have been paying him, you know, yeah. like, yeah, <laughs> but, totally. uh, but, but it was, it was great, man. And, and just like, you know, we just, we had to, you know, cause the way that album, a lot of the, tra- a lot of the stuff was tracked. It was tracked in very, um, like, uh, not typical studios. Like it was tracked in like some, some of the drums were tracked in like a weird barn or something. So no they, didn't, way, really? they didn't, yeah, they didn't really sound that, that great. It was really live and very messy sounding. Sure. Um, so, you know, I got to watch Ryan just sort of surgically do a lot of like cool stuff, you know, that, that, you know, to this day, I still adapt to a lot of, you know, what I do. So, yeah. Um, you know, what a fascinating first go at production, like at being the producer of an album. Like, yeah, uh, it, was, wow. it was crazy, man. It was. How, how did you? How do you think you did? I mean, what I was faced with, like, I think I, I think I did good, man. But like, I, I, you know, I. Are you I proud of it? Are you proud I'm of that? Super, work? I'm super proud of it. I mean, there's, there's, it's kind of because I, I feel like I listened to that record. Um, maybe uh like like around last year like at the the holidays or something like i think i was driving back from sacramento or something from from being up there for like thanksgiving or christmas or something and i just listened to it you know for the first time and man who knows how long uh and it's cool because i it's it's funny like i have a i have a it's weird i have a really good memory about like certain moments and and i have so many moments on that record where i go i remember when that happened and i remember when he tracked that and i remember like you know it's just like it's crazy to think about like because you know i was as a producer then i was so like innocent and new i mean i I, obviously i've been like playing music for a while and been around other producers and, and stuff like that but like on that level it was i was never in that you know yeah so it was it was cool man i mean just like is there a particular moment you can tell me about? Um, I'm trying to think. Um, I mean, I definitely, there's songs on there that I fucking love, man. Like I, yeah. I think they're so special. Like there's something so special about them. Uh, I mean, Cherry really... Wave, like Cherry Waves yeah. is one where like, I mean, that's one that I'm super proud of. Yeah. Uh, but I remember when he tracked that, I think the night before, like, we'd kind of went pretty hard and like drank a lot and like whatever. And he came in the next day and he was fucking just wrecked. Oh, Lord. But when he sang it, there was something just, I'm, I'm very much into not typical, perfect vocals. Like when a voice cracks in a certain way and just like, if you hear the spit coming off the mat, like I'm, I, I'm a, such a nerd for that stuff. So cool. I thought that that song had so much of that. And, um, and it just like that, it, we did it, you know, we pre- tracked it pretty quick. Um, and yeah, there's that one. And I mean, the, the last song on the record Re- revere, whatever, um, I, dude, I remember that one. Like, I just like, man, that shit just, that just hits man for me, you know, like, and I remember he wanted to replace the guitar because that guitar is a little out of tune because it's a little live tune. And I was like, no, dude, it sounds so fucking real. Like it sounds real, but it's a little bit out of tune. That's cool. But I love that, man. You don't like, it's hard to get away with that nowadays. You know, everything's, everything's so perfect. You know, it's like, some of it lacks feel because of it. And there's a time and a place, you know, there's a time and place for stuff that's perfect. And there's a time for something to just like, Hey man, like, let's just, let's just let that wood. Cause like that guitar with the the vocal and the approach of the vocal, it just it just to me, 
there was something magical about it. And I know that if you replayed the guitar, it would might be more perfect, but like, I don't know if that's the right thing, you know? Yeah. Maybe, we should, really ask, cool. maybe we should ask the Deftones fans. What they think. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, that's really fun. That's really, that's really amazing to think about. Um, and uh, how that album now, like how I can't tell you how many times it is. It's probably the most uh, like favored album on this podcast. I would say that most of my guests, particularly those um, uh, folks like under 30. Yeah. Love, yeah. That's crazy. Like the love. younger generation, you know, it's really interesting. Um, I, I don't know why I, I, I ask a lot and I try to figure it out and I've got some, some ideas, some theories, but I'm wondering what you think. Um, do you have any, uh, um, like theories as to why that has become uh, a I, I fan favorite nowadays? I, I can't really say. I don't know. I mean, it, I just remember that when it came out, there was just a lot of, a lot of hate. You know, I mean, obviously, the people that hate speak at way vo- uh, louder volumes than the people that are supportive. Unfortunately, but I, you know, I just think that like. To me, like there's, you know, the song like Xerxes, when I hear that still to this day, it gives me chills, man. And like, I love when music gives me chills. I get chills every day with music a lot of times, you know, like it's just, it's just such a, you know, there's just something special about that, that, that music that you've heard, especially me, heard that many times can still do that, you know, and that's, that's fucking like amazing. There's something I'll never take for granted, you know? Totally. That's really cool. Is it your favorite Deftones album? No. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's just because I worked on it. Maybe that's just too obvious. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, it's it's definitely probably White Pony. I'm, I know that's probably the, the generic answer, but it. I just, <laughs> because I think that like, I guess when that, that record came out, I, think, I don't think it was out yet. I think I, I think I somehow heard it or something, you know? Um, oh, everybody got the leak on it on white. Yeah. Pony. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Napster. And I, yeah. And I remember hearing it and just it was one of those weird moments when I heard it and I went, I just went. Those are those are my friends like and it, it felt weird. <laughs> it felt weird for me to like something so much that like, you know, these are these are just my homies. But like I'm in I'm in awe, you know, because wow. they did something, you know, they did something really special, you know. Um, and, and I, I'm never too cool to not like, not give props like that. Like, even though you're my homie, like, Hey man, I'm a fan of what you do. I, there's other f- friends I have that make music and, you know, like the same shit. I'm like, bro, like, man, that shit's real. doesn't mean I'm not going to tell you when your shit's whack. You know, it just <laughs> means like, fuck, you really knocked it out of the park on that one. Like, damn, you, you done did the thing. You know? Do they have a do they have a uh, one that you're like that's whack? No, I mean I can't, you know. <laughs> I can't go there, man. I mean Okay, let's talk about your own album then. Let's talk about let's talk about Pink Cell Phone. A um, lot of folks, a lot of folks go like what is happening? I love Pink Cell Phone for the record. It I, might it might be I, my yeah. favorite song on Saturday. Night. I I dude, I I love that song. I mean maybe the whole ending of the song was not supposed to be there. How do you mean? The, you know the whole chant like when she's just like uh, annie's just like going off about like british people have bad teeth and all. that was not supposed to be that was supposed to be like a bonus like maybe it'd be like a uh on the japanese like special edition and they just left it in there i was like Ooh. i don't know i don't know how i don't know how that shit did in the uk but it might have fell fell down the charts quickly <laughs> Motherfuckers were like, hey, hey, mate. It's got such a dope bop to it. I don't dude, care. I, 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 dude, I like that song. I think, I mean, um, I think Chino's performance on it is so cool. Like, it's just, uh, yeah, I just remember, like, I mean, I basically, he's saying, at first he's saying Annie's parts, like in the chorus and stuff, the stuff that she does. Mm-hmm. And, um, and yeah, I dude, I just like that song. I just think like I would say the one and you know, you might like this you're trying to fish fish me for some like bad comments or something. 
Um, I promise I, I won't put it no, across the no, internet. I no, I, I would say the one thing that I miss about like recent Deftones records is moments like that. Is moments like you know, teenager. Uh, Interesting. Just something to just like, oh fuck! Like I remember when I when it, you know when I first heard teenager, I was like, whoa. Like, yeah. I is that what it. lucky you is to you on the um on the self titled? The one that's like I think it's a crook beat. Yeah. Uh, um. Is that so, like that weird turn or whatever? Somewhat, on the album? but but somewhat, but not not as much. I don't think you know. Okay. Some not as much as like a pink cell phone or a, or a teenager. You know. Yeah. Um. I just. Yeah. I just. I I think yeah. I just I just like getting thrown for a loop of like you know. I like making people feel uncomfortable, like in a way, like I, you know, I just think that's I mean, how many guitar songs you, you can you hear to like, I mean, are you re, you're not going to reinvent anything like, you know, you're not going to make a, a better version of, you know, this other thing that you did. I don't, you know. Yeah. Um, but there does but, some seem to be some quality that you're alluding to um, with the newer records that I feel like is um, something that I've been sort of fishing for or driving for. And that is that they are really like they're extended plays like they're it's they're like the, it's a full album. You know what I mean? Yeah, or long yeah. like it's it's meant to be like a front to back. Yeah. Like yeah. ride. There isn't like a there, there's no part of their music or their albums that are like songs. I mean, I will, I will say this and I, and it's, and it, you know, and it's something that I've, I've said to Gino, uh, maybe the last two albums they did or three albums, maybe, but there was a point, I don't know what record that they were writing at that point, but crosses was on tour. So this is like 2014. So I don't know what record that would be. Maybe they were probably working on Gore then. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not sure. Cause Koi came out in 12 and then okay. Gore was 16. So I remember we were on, we were on the bus and, uh, cause they, wait, who did, I'm trying to think. Okay. So that was, who did Gore? That was, uh, not Rascal Linux, but no, I just had the uh, conversation. Uh, Hyde. Uh, Hyde. Yes. Yeah, Matt yeah. Hyde. Okay. Right? So yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't even know if they had him in line yet to make it, but maybe they did, but he played me some demos of that record and there were parts of the demos that chino had tracked some shit at his studio in in oregon where i want to say he was playing drums no way and it sounded like shit but in the best way possible and and like i, I would say it sounded like shit like i i'm for some reason this sort of comes to mind but like uh airbag which is like the first song on uh lk computer radiohead a lot of those sounds in that song they sound like shit the drums sound like shit but in the most amazing way so he played me some demos that were like spliced like sort of like rehearsal demos of them jamming but then they were like cut to this section where it was just this super raw thing with this guitar and I remember I heard that and I'm like, bro, you got to fucking use that. Like, that's got to be the part. Like, don't re-record that. Like, if you mixed that with like that classic wall of sound Deftones thing, I'm like, bro, that's next level. Like, that's like, come on. And he's like, oh, yeah, real? Oh, for real? Like, oh, whatever. And then didn't do it. Fine. Okay. Um, And then. I remember on uh, when they were doing ohms, when they were, I think they were making it because yeah, they were in LA at that point, and and a lot of times we would meet up in the evening, and you know, and he was like feeling good about everything, and I was like, and I and I said it to him again, I was like, man, remember that when you did that thing, and I'm like, dude, you gotta do like you gotta do shit like that, man. Like, I want to hear, I want to hear a section where it goes down to Abe and he's playing on a a kid's drum set, you know, and it's super trashy, but the vocal is like just owning it. And I don't know, I'm like, and dude, you're working, you're working with the best, like the pretty much the best engineer in the world, you know, like as far as like, 
you could tell Terry Date get this sound. This is the sound I want. He's going to get it. He's going to know how to do that, you know? And I'm like, think about, I, I, cause I kept referencing things of like, uh, I'm like, dude, think of, um, uh, what's the song? White Pony, RX Queen. I'm like, those drums in the verses, those sound weird and just like shitty, but like amazing. Like, I don't know. It's like a fucking cassette player. Like what? I don't know what you recorded that on, but it sounds so good. I'm like, I want more of that mixed with like the big wall of wall of Steph, you know? And, yeah. and they didn't really do that. And, you know, <laughs> still a great album. I think, I think, you know, when I heard Ohms, I, you know, I hit him up and I was like, man, you, you guys, you guys done did it, man. Gave him a hug, you know, it was all good. You know, I was like, man, this, this sounds great, you know? Um, yeah. But that, that, that would be my only, you know. So that's what a Deftones produced album would, from you would, would, would sound like today. Like if yeah, you were I mean, to produce a sound, an album today, you would go, you would go hunting for that, those moments. I don't know. I just, I just, I'm a fan of dynamic and like, I want, you know, and I'm not even saying that I execute it in the way that I, I would, in the way that I would tell myself to do, you know, it's just like, I understand that like, you know, you're, when you're making an album, there's so many things happening that like, you know, it's easy to lose sight of a certain thing, you know, because you're, you're just focused on sometimes, you know, a lot of times you're focused on deadlines and getting things done. And I, you know, I know all about that. So it's like, you know, I think that, um, I just love those things. I love, like, when I think about those records, um, those are those, th those moments in them, you know, the RX queen, like, uh, you know, I mean, those demos that he played me for uh, Gore or whatever, like, I was just like, dude, you got it. You like that sounds so cool. Like, what do you it's think? It's not going to the... alienate like anyone. Wow. At this point, I feel like they've done so many things that they, yeah, like to do something new probably has to require that sort of experimentation. Yeah. Do I don't, you... I mean, I don't want, it's like, I don't, it's not like I want to change the songwriting. Right. I just want to change like, hey, man, like what if like, I don't know, a crazy idea. But what if in the verses of the song, Abe's playing like a fucking 808 kit and then he goes to acoustic kit on the courses? I don't know. Fucking try it. It might be amazing. You know, you never know. Dude, Abe on some 808s sounds. Yeah, I mean, he's a wild. Dude, he's yeah. He's the most underrated drummer in rock, period. Period. Point period. Blank. He's and a madman. It's, and he's it's insane where, to me. And he it's wears insane. a mad, amazing geisha wig. Maybe, <laughs> right that's, amazing. maybe that's the deal. Is if he's not, if he's wearing the geisha wig more, maybe yeah. he'll you know people start paying attention. Yeah. I I always think it's funny. I've I've said this to folks before. Like like people send Chino stuff, and he'll do it, and he does stuff. I'm like he's doing stuff with you know Trippy Red or whatever. I'm like yeah, yeah. what? I'm like all these artists are going to get Travis Barker, and yeah. Abe Cunningham has more groove in his pinky. Not night and day, man. Night it's wild day. to me. It's wild to me. And I can't imagine that he would be like, nah, I don't have time to do those drums. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just think it's, you know, it's just probably one of those things where people don't think of him in, in that, in that way. You know, they just, you know, it's like, oh, Deftones are amazing or Chino's amazing, you know? Like, sure. Sure. Which is, it's just what it is, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not trying to shit on Travis Barker either. No, no. He's, totally, he's great. Totally. But like, also, like you said, most underrated drummer in all of yeah, rock music yeah yeah. yeah that's super cool that's really fun and you did um well actually before i jump ahead to uh, what you uh contributed on diamond eyes because i know you did uh uh drive the cover but i also want to know like um because obviously there was a big a lot of stuff happened between saturday night wrist yeah uh and diamond eyes um but i'm i'm um interested in, in specifically the music and of of things and what you know about Eros and like what you know about um, their feelings towards it. Uh, are there any insights that you can provide that maybe um, the world hasn't heard? Yeah, they, uh, cause I was, I was working on that actually. Oh, you um, were. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, right up, right up to cheese accident. I mean, we are actually working the night of that he had the accident, which is no way, which is so, so crazy um 
wild to think about that the night again with my memory memorized memory having a memory of things uh we were working and um trying to think uh so yeah we were working uh and at that point i start i started to we were just like hanging around like you know because i'll play him stuff that i'm doing like working on if it's something that i think he might dig or whatever and I had played him some, it wasn't even across his tune, but it was something that I had done uh, with, with Chuck or something I had worked on. And he was like, what's this? And he was kind of like, he was almost like, yo, can we get this? <laughs> like, I'm like, well, what do you mean? He's like, yo, can, can we get it? Like, it's like, this sounds like, like be a sick death. And he was like, and this is the, this is the crazy thing. He's like, this is sick. He's like, dude, and I, man, I really think fucking she would love this. And, and I was like, yeah. And I was like, and then we just like start talking about, it. I was like, oh, dude, I haven't seen him in a while. How's he doing? Like, whatever. And then we just talk about him. And then, and then, you know, whatever we went on with the night and then, um, and we were supposed to work the next day. And then she, you know, I remember it was, it was a weird moment. It was like, I think my phone died or something like my phone was so i was on my way to the at&t store to like get a new phone or something and finally when i talked to him when i got my phone back on i think he'd called a few times or was like because i was trying to get back to the studio because he was going to be there and then he called me and he told me that shit and i was like whoa so basically like that was you know pretty heavy to think about you know like um it, yeah. it it's uh you know he's like yeah so i'm uh I'm, you know, I'm heading up north and, you know, he's like, you know, obviously we're not going to work to get today. You know, I mean, do I remember what, you know, I remember it was like, it was November 5th. It was like the day or, or 4th. It was like the day Obama got elected. It was like, it was kind of crazy because it was like such a, like a, a, a moment, but also it's like super bummer, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, and, and at that point we didn't really know, I don't think we really knew the severity of it. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, so, 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 yeah, I mean, I heard everything, you know, Wow. I heard everything. Um, you got it all on your computer there. I would imagine you want to pull up some. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but I, you know, I mean, a lot has been said, I think about it, but I, I think everyone that said stuff about it doesn't know what they're talking about. You what know, you, uh, you know, I mean, I feel like, uh, I, I I don't know. I feel like I heard like Sergio say some stuff and it, him saying like, oh, it wasn't really that good or like, I don't know. I could be misquoting people I, and I don't want to do that. But how would you characterize it? Um, It definitely was not finished. And there were some problems, you know, with it. But there is a few songs. My God. There's two songs in particular that. One of them gives me that thing I want where, where it's like, where I feel like a, like uh, not Abe, but like, I feel like Frank was doing some, some drum machine shit, oh, but that song is so like, both of those songs are so heavy in the best way. I mean, one of them, I'm like, Chino's like doing like some scream rap, like almost like rapping, like, like ad rock. And it's, oh dude it's 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 what i want you literally just made the hairs on my yeah, arms yeah. stand yeah, on no, end. and 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 when, when i when i heard that like you know not that long ago because you know i was like going through some drives or something and, and it it's it's i mean and and it, again terry day just murdering it like like I, I mean, I hope they do something with that, like someday, because it's it's like, especially Chino doing that ad rock shit. Where like, I, I mean, we both have ex like an amazing amount of love for Beastie Boys. Like, I, I still think they're just so underrated as producers, especially. Mm. Uh, but like, they just to hear him do something like that, it's like. It's not like he's he's like rapping, but not really rapping. You know, it's just like more that like ad rock sort of delivery. Um, right. But but you know, obviously Chino's version of that. Sure. Um, 
but yeah, that was a wild time, man. I mean, uh, it was a dark, I mean, it was a, I think it was a dark period for, for Chino as well. I mean, you know, just like sort of, you know, I think there was like maybe some label stuff, uh, maybe management. I don't know, like about sort of like trying to maybe make them something that they're just not, you know, you know, uh, Deaf Tones are just, they, they've always been a thing where, I don't know, I think you, you can, you should, you should just guide them. You know, they need, they may, might need a little bit of guidance, but they, they do what they do. And it's how, how do you make that thing that they do the best it can be, you know? And it's not really about bringing in other people, you know, to help with that really. It's, it's, it's more just like, find the right producer, maybe somebody that can like, I don't know. I don't know what was going on with the label. I don't know if they were trying to get them to write hits or what, you know, it was, it was just, it sounds like something a label would do. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, to me, it's like, if you were banned that long, put out that many albums, it's like, you know, I don't know. Let them do what they do is sort of, that, that would be my impression. I, I figured. Do, yeah. After, let them do what they do or like fucking let them go. <laughs> you know? Word. Yeah. After pony, I, I guess I sort of figured like, they had the license to do whatever the fuck they wanted to do. You yeah, know what I mean, yeah, and or and, at least they you know, should have. They've earned it. Yeah, you know? and yeah, well deserved, man. I mean, they sh they should do that. I don't I don't think that you know. But they have that license now. Oh yeah, yeah. I think I think finally, you know, it's just it's just. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, you know, I will say that there's definitely some some really good stuff on there. You know, that's really exciting. Um, do, you, do you know like roughly? You said there's two songs that that are just absolute bangers and they're oh, not man, they're, like, like man like, neither of them is smile either right because smile no, is the one that no, we yeah, yeah. That, but that, that, that's a, that's a great song too but like um yeah but man there's wow. i was i was actually shocked when i heard the, the 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 like the songs again you know just like the little roughs or whatever it was just uh yeah i mean well, Chino, uh, his birthday's coming up, right? He might yeah. get, uh, he might get antsy, maybe. Just, I, yeah, I, need, I, don't I, need, know. To, I need to put out a song. Uh, here's the thing: is that, like, you know, knowing, knowing, you know, me knowing very well how he works and and everything, is that like, I don't, he he might not even have the, the like, he might not even have those versions. Like, I, he probably won't. He might not even remember those songs. Sure, but I get that. You know, I don't. I mean, I'm not gonna try and say it's. It's. You might need to shake that tree a little bit, dog. Jostle that memory. Yeah, I, it, I'm it, a goon for Chino raps. Any any day that man wants to rap again, he decides he wants to rap I, again. Yeah, I'm, I'm always, gonna be first in line. Yeah, I always tell him, man. Hey, man, I'm gonna get you rapping again someday. Do you say that? Do you really? You know, like I'm like, man, you never, you never know, man. Like you, you know, it's like, why not? That's so dope. That, yeah, the way I look at it is like it. It to me, it's uh, it's it's just another tool in in the tool belt, right? Like it's just another. Or it's not even. It's not even. It doesn't even have to. It's not like it has to be rapping, but like some sort of rhythmic thing that, like you know, the characteristics of the kids. Yeah, of, yeah. Or... It's like I think there's, you know, there's so much that that he can do. I think that people haven't even heard yet. You know. Yeah, that's really cool. You actually, um, I was looking back at an interview that you guys did from the uh, from the first uh, crosses. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it was. I think you'd already put out the album, um, but uh, uh, you said something about um, the low end that you discovered, or it was maybe maybe it was recent actually. Because I was I did a little bit of homework, and now I'm just getting my sources uh, mixed up. But um, it sounded like you discovered a new uh, a new element of his voice. Oh yeah, yeah, that was recent. Yeah, that was, was that recent? The, uh, when we did the cover song, um, the cause and effect thing, and uh, I think that was the first time he had sang that low. And then I think he, I liked it. You know, I really loved it. And then I think he really, I just think he never really had had done that. You know. Sure. And that's why I mean, I remember when that came out, everyone was like, "Who's singing?" Like there were so many comments. They were like, "This is great, but who's singing?" <laughs> what yeah like people really thought we had like a different singer or something it was like what like I mean, you got this new baritone saying baby you yeah. nobody knows who's on yeah i know man who's this guy <laughs> that's so dope 
Oh man, this is um, this is really uh, an exciting um, conversation. Uh, I know we are pushing time though, so I want to make sure that you're yeah. chilling and and. I'm cool, man. All right, cool. Because I there's still there's still a couple of things that I would love to ask. Um, yeah. And about um, coming in on the the uh, the Diamond Eyes uh, recording, and and you contributed Drive. Did you did you do other stuff? What Drive is actually on Saturday Night Wrist, I believe. On, is it on a bonus like sort of track? Yeah. Oh, word! Because yeah, Spot- Spotify you, must be get must be getting after me. Might, or uh, Wikipedia. I or did do I did do um, I only did mixing on three um sort of extra tracks on diamond eyes with the, the covers uh there's like a yeah Card- cardigans cover drive like jehu and a, a japan cover okay and uh i was brought in on that um this chino hit me up i guess they had gotten some mixes for those songs it was like okay. one of those things where they went in the studio for the day and just cut them mm. uh he got the mixes and he's like dude i i I don't like these mixes, man. Like, I don't like the way my voice sounds and like whatever. And he's like, would you be, you know, would you be down to do them? I was like, yeah, you know, like, you know, if you can get me the, get me the sessions or whatever. And then, yeah. And then I just did them and, you know, did, did, did his vocal proper and I'm good to go. That was it. That's cool. So yeah. wh- wh- what is it that you, why are you such an expert on, on Gino's vocal? Like, how is it that you have come to be like the, the guy i don't i don't really know like i i mean i just i just sort of just learned what he likes i guess and and you know he's very much like when he goes in the booth the vocals got a like it's almost got to sound the way it sounds on the record mm-hmm. whereas you know a lot of a lot of people go in they track more dry his shit's got to be swimming in everything you know oh, and and, and more than it is on the record even you know um he he you know he just i think he just i learned early on that he likes his voice to sound like an instrument almost in a way that like you know a guitar player steps on a distortion pedal or a chorus or a delay or whatever and you know and i get that like it's i think that he doesn't like to feel separate from the music you know and i think if you sing dry it can easily sound that way you know but every every singer's different you know i think it but he's he's especially different in that way where like you know it's got it's you know it's got to sound a certain way not 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 like it's gotta like he gets upset you know whatever it's just like it helps bring him to the moment i i know that him going in like when he goes in it's you know i just make sure it's it's good to go you know because yeah. I'm otherwise I might miss something, you know. I might miss like the good take, you know, like the magic, you know, whatever. So it's just about that, really. I mean, I think that uh I think that like also too that like maybe like whenever you know, whenever I would track vocals like myself or something, I would I was so particular about how it would sound because like I, you know. I'm not the best singer in the world. So like, I've got to have it sound like a certain way for me to even get like the right feeling across, you know? Totally. Um, you know, even if it's just like singing harmonies and crosses, which are like not very, they're not like super upfront in the mix or anything. It's just more of like a layer. It's just about, you know, I got to feel comfortable, you know? Are you, is that you um, doing the ooze and goodbye horses? Uh, is that are you doing backing vocals on that? I think that's probably both of us. It's probably both of you. Yeah. I should just as a quick aside, I should tell you because I'm an 80s baby, 90s kid, and yeah. the my introduction to Goodbye Horses was Silence of the Lambs. So oh yeah. yeah. Now I mean, my, 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 yeah. I think it was mine too. Oh, was it really? Yeah. Oh, that's dope. Well, now when my five year old is singing it around the house, it's weird. <laughs> and and that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's yeah, on you. You're just thinking about that scene going, uh yeah, I don't know if she's gonna. No. <laughs> uh, that's super funny though. Um, but uh, I'm glad that you mentioned you singing because that I want I want to take uh, go back to uh, touring um, with the uh, the Revolution Smile and because um, uh, when I sent you some notes, I was like that you you played Wembley, like you played yeah. we- like 
Yeah, do you, do you remember that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, it was a pretty interesting time. Uh, we, you know, I think we were. When I say we, it was really me. I was dealing with a lot of stuff with the label, and there was, it wasn't the best time. You know, the other the other guys in the band they didn't really you know know about all everything that was going on mm. and i mean maybe maybe one of them he's like you know he's one of the guys that's still like a close friend of mine um but that was that was a yeah, i remember that show because it was th- there was something going wrong with my gear on that show and i pretty much f- fucking had a meltdown oh, and no way. because I, I think it was just like that was the straw that broke the camel's back or whatever they say Word. um and I broke a guitar. I remember a vintage guitar, you know, like it just, it was not fun. I mean, we, I remember we had this tour manager out with us that was just, he's just, he just wasn't a good person. And oh, no. he, he's like one of those dudes that would just, I don't know, would just tell everyone back home everything that happened on the road. Not that like I was doing anything bad, like just like, but if I like, well, in that show, I had a fucking meltdown because right. here we are playing Wembley Arena, it's supposed to be this like super exciting thing. And, uh, and my machine, gear was yeah. like messing up. And I was already like going through stuff with the label and everything that I was already just like, un, you know, probably not the most stable person in the world at that point. And I just kind of like melted down. And then like everyone, maybe except with the, you know, our bass player, who's like the guy's still a good friend of mine. Everyone looked at me and was like, basically like, you're fucked up. Like mm-hmm. you're, you're a bad person. You're like, you know, you need to get your shit to get like, and I'm like, what? The rest of you were just on the, you know, the last tour we did, you were just on the bus of the band that we were opening for telling them how terrible they were. Like, you know, and I'm like, what, what are you like? So it's just like one of those things where nowadays, I mean, I would have dealt with it much different, you know, you sure. know it's just like being more grown up and just being more, you know, rational about things. But yeah, just like it was, it was, it wasn't as exciting as it probably should have been. But the, <laughs> the next day, the next day, um, I can't remember what the next show was, but, uh, oh, side note, that show, Wembley. Chino always makes a joke where he's like, you know that show at Wembley? He's like, I don't think I ever told you, but I'm the one that fucked your pedal board up. No. He's trying to say that he did some shit. And I'm like, I mean, it's just, it's just, nowadays it's just funny. Like, I, I don't even care. <laughs> I don't even think about that anymore. But, but uh, it's just funny. So the next day, um, uh, like I come out of the bus, I'm, I'm just kind of like, I don't know. I'm just like, kind of just ashamed like not that i fucking really did much but like i was just kind of like i mean i might have yelled at my band or something but like i just like walked in and then like the first person i see is steph and he's just like standing there like smiling this fucking big old grill just like smiling and he's like i heard somebody had a meltdown last night that was like the first thing he said and i was like yeah he's he's like oh yeah it happens and then i was like yeah cool and then and it's funny too, because I have, I have, I have a bunch of friends, you know, I've, I've know people that are like, you know, tool fans are, they're like Maynard fans are like motherfuckers, like Jesus, you know, like, sure. and I, I've, I've never been into tool. I mean, I, I, I respect them a lot. I think they're, you know, great or whatever, but I've just, me personally, I've never just been a fan or whatever. And so like, I'm just standing there talking to Steph and then like Maynard walks up and he's like, Hey, what's up? And he's like, either of you care for an espresso? And I'm like, <laughs> Yes, I would. He's like, yeah, come back to my dressing room. And I like, he takes me back to his dressing room. And he's got this like crazy ass espresso machine. It looked like a, I don't know. Like it looked like a, it looked like, I just remember like the, the, the Freddy Krueger basement with all the like steam <laughs> and pipes and shit. It looked like that, but it was huge. So he makes me like an espresso and, and it's just like me and him chilling. Like, and then he's just like <laughs> talking about touring as like an, opening band and like telling me his stories and it was like it was super weird and surreal and then when i you know when i tell my friends that are like 
Maynard fans are like, dude, that's insane. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a chill dude, you know? Just having some coffee with Maynard. Yeah, it's just like, so that was like, you know, that was... It's a crazy 24 hours. Yeah, it was pretty nuts, man. Um, but yeah. Uh, so but that, that tour... Was a, that, that was a, I mean, other than that, it was a fun, you know, it was a fun tour. I mean, I just picked like, the shittiest date to talk about. <laughs> yeah. You just picked the, the wrong date. I mean, we talked about Paris earlier and that was good, you know? Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, it was cool. It was cool. It was, it was totally cool. I mean, yeah, it was just, you know, it is what it is. I mean, you know, I mean, that stuff happens on, to every yeah. on tour. Yeah. You know? I think to every person, I think people yeah, yeah. have those moments and, and it's sort of, um, it brings it back to those uh, what we were talking about out the gate with like the conversations that you have or you know meeting your idols or whatever and when you yeah. when you have those moments like i i have some friends who've had some moments with um maynard that were just terrible and, yeah, uh, yeah 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 i mean but it's same. like you, you have a bad day like yeah that, that yeah. shit happens and it's yeah, it's but... unfortunate it sort of lasts but you know not every day can be espresso on the tour but oh. <laughs> <laughs> no yeah it was just it was super super funny it was like what oh yeah okay i just thought like an espresso like he was just gonna like grab me one from the catering or something i don't know it was just like and then he like bites me back it's all crazy all steampunk looking thing like, like, yeah right like That's it was funny. like gold you know i'm thinking about that like that will smith movie with like the wild wests the steampunk trains yeah, and all yeah. That shit. yeah that's what it totally looked like it was like what what <laughs> this dude's on another level because i was thinking like oh because I already the venue was like in the middle of nowhere. I was like, oh, I'm not gonna be able to find a coffee around here. Like, you know, like, <laughs> pretty funny, man. Um, but That's yeah, so rad. That's super fun. Um, how how much longer do you think Deftones are gonna keep doing this? Can they? Are they? Are they gonna be that band that just goes until like the wheels fall off? Until they're just old and until they're the Rolling Stones? I don't. I don't know. I mean, I don't. For me, I, I don't think like I I don't know I I can't I, I honestly I can't see Chino doing it like and it not being good because I still think he cares you know um you know just just as much as I care about like still making you know I I I try not to do anything for money you know like musically um. And I've, and I've been very fortunate, like to, to be able to do that. Um, and I, and I think, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I still feel like even like, you know, when, when I, I, cause I see him like when they're doing, starting up their tours and he cares so much about all the, the visual aspect of the tour and the, and the stage design and everything is like, and that's like, to me, that's how I am about crosses and, so I, I kind of get that. I feel like I get that trust from him because he probably sees me being the, the him in, in Deftones, you know? So totally. he kind of trusts me with like all the visual stuff that, that, that crosses does is all, you know, sort of comes from my brain, uh, my brain, but also knowing, I know Chino's going to probably be, he'll probably like this. I'm going to, you know, of course I, I run everything by him, but like, I just try to make it very, you know, uh, easy for him because I don't, I don't want, you know, it's like, I, I just like try to set everything up and be like, Hey, come through. You want to do this? Otherwise, uh, you know, why do it? You know, like for him, like why, you know, it's like, and it's like, I don't just the same as like, I don't really, I only want to do crosses if it really makes sense. I don't want to spend a bunch of time and then like nothing happens, you know? Yeah. What do you hope for, for crosses? What do you just to continue to release music and have fun doing it? Yeah. I mean, I don't, you know, I've tried to, I don't ever, it's not like I've ever wanted Deftones to stop, you know, because totally. of crosses. But if it's like, if it makes sense, I think, I think both things can, can, live in the same world and not interfere um mm -hmm. and and i think it's it's a obviously it's a different sort of side of of him that he can exercise you know um it's it's fun for me to do you know as a as a 
as a producer, especially because it's, it's, it's stuff that I really love making, you know? And, you know, as a producer, like, I mean, I, I, I only do stuff that I really want to do, but it's not like everything I do is like, I'm a hundred percent down with this. Like, right. it's always like, it's more like, yeah, this is kind of cool. But if I put myself into it, I'm going to love it a hundred percent, you know? Um, so it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, yeah, with crosses, it's just like, I love making this stuff, you know? Um, it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's not the easiest stuff to, to make track wise, like right and everything, because I feel like it's very, it's very specific. It, you know, it can't, it, it, it can have elements of certain eras, but it can't be fully in that era because then it's, it's, it, I, a, I'm just not going to like it, but also I don't think Chino's going to be like, if we made something that was like a hundred percent, like if I sent him like a hundred percent, like synth wave fucking track, he'd be like, bitch, what are you doing? Like, you know, he would know, like, it's like, <laughs> which I'm not going to do that. Cause that's not what I want to make, but it's like, I, right. you know, we both love the eighties. You know, like we both love 80s music, but like none of our shit is like 100% 80s, you know? I mean, maybe if it's a cover, you know, I guess sort of, but like. But even the covers feel present. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, I don't, I don't want, yeah, I don't want to, to like try and sound like a certain era. Like it just, I don't know, not, not knocking anyone that does that. I'm just saying for, for what we do. Um just as like, if I, I can't, I can't put something like, I, I'm not going to send him something that has like trap drums in it. Cause he's probably just going to be like, what are, you, what are you doing, dude? So that's, that's, what's challenging about it is it's very specific. It's very, you know, it's got to have a certain vibe. It, it, it's, it can tend to be darker, but it can't, it can't be too dark for it sounds evil. Then he's just going to be like, that's corny, you know? Interesting. So it's, it's challenging for me, but I think that's the best. Uh, I think that's where the best music comes from is being challenged. And and I think like, I love to be challenged because I always want to become better, you know, at what I do. And if, if I'm not challenged and if I think my, my shit's the fucking best, like I'm not going to, I'm not going to make, I'm not going to make good music. I mean, for me, the best thing for a musician or a, or a producer or an artist is to be in a room with someone and feel intimidated. That's been the best for me because I've been in like rooms with people where I'm like, fuck, I need to step my game up. This this dude's like, this dude's on another level. Or or sometimes you hear a song and you're like, damn, like, oh man, I wish I made that. Like, you know? And and I think it's just like, you know, those those are what the moments that make you grow. And maybe, maybe for some people it makes you quit too, but Word. you know. But yeah, that separates the men from the boys. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just don't want to, I don't, yeah, I just, you know, I want to be, I want to be like, you know, I want to feel like I got to do like make better music always, you know? Um, and that can be, that can be a great thing, but it also can be um, a bummer sometimes too. Like, cause you, you, you know, we all second guess ourselves, you know, I think everyone, you know, yeah. Yeah, that human aspect of um, of, uh, of music, uh, I think it it um, it's often overlooked, especially when we talk about you know rock stars. Yeah. Um, and, but also to sort of circle back to the uh, some of the things that you were saying about those um, imperfections or the things that aren't necessarily super clean. Yeah. You know what I mean, that sort of muddies that water as well. You don't get that human experience yeah. you don't feel the vulnerability necessarily it or whatever the case may be that's that's really fun to think about it's really fun to think about you guys in this room creating some of my favorite pieces of music of all time that's just so that's wild yeah it's wild. it's uh it's yeah it's it's crazy man i mean i think that we've had some we've had some great magical moments in here we've had some fights you know we've had like we've had it all we've you know probably fucking both cried in here at some point who knows you know like it's it's uh it gets weird in here man it, it, who is the first one to cry you or chino 
Shit, I don't know. Probably me. Yeah. You might say some shit hurt my feelings or something, but you know. <laughs> I'm a sensitive guy too, so I get that. I, I mean, that. we we you know, we both are. You know, it's it's uh I never I think I think my thing was before is that like, you know, I feel like we over the pandemic, I feel like we got I we got way closer and we just got to know each other a lot better. And uh I think that I really I think it's easy to think when someone's like successful and they're like, you know, a quote unquote rock star or whatever, that like they're bulletproof and they don't have feeling nothing you say to them can hurt their feelings, but it's not that way at all, you know? Um, so I, you know, I've I always try to learn of how to approach things in a certain way of like, hey, you know, you know, how can I get this point across of like, hey, we need to do we need to make this better. And if it's maybe if it's something personal, you know, and that goes with any, any artist or whatever that I work with, it's like, Hey, how can I say, you know, yeah, that vocal's not the, the strongest. Like, how do we, we, or that part you wrote is not the best, you know? Um, but we, we need to make it the best. So, you know, how do we, how do we do that? Who, who haven't you worked with that you would love to, uh, in the studio with um man I don't, you know i don't it's one of those things too it's like almost like meeting someone you know like that that sure. i look up to like i don't know if i would want to like because in a way like i mean for me like my my probably you know this might sound out of out of the element here of crosses but like my probably my favorite like my biggest inspiration as producers is probably like BC boys and, and the Neptunes. Like those are probably my, the, the ones that are just like, I still, you know, like I still, and maybe even like Kanye, you know, like, like as, as, as producers, it's like, but I don't know if I would want, you know, in a way, like, yeah. I don't know. I, I might, I might be too intimidated. <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, and 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 i think it takes uh i think it's it, in a way i think it's okay to admit that you know yeah like i don't think is 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 as big as you get as an artist or a producer or whatever is like thinking you know it's just getting too fucking ahead of yourself you know um and i you know and the thing is i'm 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 confident about what i do you know i i feel like i'm in some ways i'm more confident than i've ever been but still, I, yeah. still, I get like, I get, I still second guess myself sometimes, you know, totally. um, it's, it's very easy to do that as a writer. If you go through writing blocks and stuff, you know, like if, mm -hmm. if you're not making anything for a while, you, it, man, that'll tear you apart. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Hamper your confidence. And then it's the domino effect Yeah. of, yeah, yeah. That's a slippery slope for yeah, sure. For sure. That first uh, Clips album, Grinding. Oh, yeah. that, I was listening to Clips earlier this week because obviously the new Push T came out not too yeah. long ago. And so that was like, let me just go trip down memory lane for a yeah. minute. And, oh, yeah, dude. That's, that's. Gosh, it's so good. Yeah. So yeah. Good. I mean, to me, what my, what I do, I don't know. I think it's what, what everyone should do. If they start feeling like they're making the best shit ever, especially as like a producer, track person. Is just go on YouTube and just search for a, a Neptune's instrumental playlist and it'll just play their instrumentals and fuck man, that shit's a bummer. <laughs> it's so good, man. You're just like, oh damn it. I'm never gonna be that good. <laughs> A lot of people go to White Pony to foster their depression. You go to Neptune's uh, beats. Yeah, no, I'm just like, I'm just like, man, if like if you ever feel like your shit is just, you're just making the best shit you've ever been in your life, and you're just thinking like, um, not that I, have, not that I ever feel like that, but like you know, I'm just saying this is like good to just go there and just be like, oh, okay, All right. sit, sit down, be humble. <laughs> yes, exactly, man. It's just, uh, I don't know, I just. I'm just honest about that, you know, and just, and, and I, and I, I don't mind praising someone, you know, if their shit's good, I'm going to just be like, man, but also if, if, if I don't think it's good, I'll just tell them like, Hey, 
you know are the um are the dudes weird about it when you're like yo white pony is fucking amazing where they were like cool man uh let's go get a beer or were they just... <laughs> i don't even think i said anything back in those days you know i just no. like, i was probably just like damn yeah i was like damn you know? yeah yeah i, I know <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> So I, I don't know if you did answer. What is your favorite uh, Deftones album? Did you uh, say? Oh, well, you did say it was Pony. Yeah, did you? Why, what yeah, about why, is a, is your favorite song a song off of Pony? Then I don't know if I really have a favorite song. Um, yeah, I probably don't really have a favorite song. You know, um, I mean, one doesn't really jump out. You know. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. I'm sure it'll, I'm sure it'll, it's, it's not an easy question that to answer, to be honest. Yeah, with you, but, yeah, uh, yeah. It changes all the time. Yeah. Um, all right. So the way that I uh, conclude every conversation is with a request for recommendations. And this is based off something that Chino said on a podcast that he, the mm -hmm. only reason he tweets out YouTube links to songs that he likes is because he thinks that's the coolest shit that people can get from him on the internet. So in that spirit, um, I'm actually looking for maybe something more specific, or maybe if you just want to hit one of these and then any other kind of recommendation and it can be open to whatever you want, but I would love to know what to put people onto who are like, yo, what else can I listen to? That's like crosses. <laughs> Cause people come to me with that. I cannot tell you like more than a handful of times. And I've been like, I, I don't know. I don't really know where to point you. Where yeah, would you point? People? I don't, I don't really know either. I mean, I think, uh, Man, we're so original, bro. They just broke the mold. No, I'm just, uh, I don't, I, man, I, I think, facts. yeah, I think, uh, I think because of where our minds are at, you know, myself and Chino's is that we have so many influences when we go and make this music that it kind of just ends up being what it is. And, and it sucks because when I'm talking to somebody, and it, it, you know, and it might be somebody that doesn't know, you know, who sure. crosses up is, or doesn't even know Deftones are, or, which I think I, I, I actually run across a lot of those people in sort of like writing sessions and, and sort of like people that are more in the pop world and like, not, they don't really f follow anything else other than that. And they'll be like, Oh, you have a project. Well, what's it like? And I'm like, that's always the worst because I'm like, ah. And I mean, I guess like if I mean, you know, it's kind of like I always say it's like it, it it's got parts of Depeche Mode, obviously, like, but it's not 80s. It's more it's more produced with like with more of like a Kanye aspect, like a, you know, it's like a little bit, it's rougher. It's got like more low end and everything that that so it's hard for me to i mean it's it sucks because it sounds so lame to say nobody else is doing what we're doing baby you know like it's kind of but it i don't know like that's it kinda, what's up i it love kinda, that. i mean i'm i'm not trying to save it you but know, like, it's what it is you know when when you listen to um i don't know if you're a spotify listener but i'm a spotify listener so when i when yeah. i do listen yeah. on 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 um spotify and i'll get through the album and then it'll just start playing like chino stuff or yeah, like yeah. deftones uh, yeah. inspired stuff and i'm like this is not what i was listening to this is not the same this is not crosses inspired this is just like loosely yeah. chino inspired maybe yeah but... it, yeah it'll go to like perfect circle or like failure or something it's like well that's not at all at all it's not even close so yeah. it's it's really actually it's comforting to hear you say like i don't know <laughs> yeah i really don't i mean it uh, you know and i i think that uh yeah it, it sounds lame to say but i just i don't i would well i don't know if i wish there were more people doing the same thing because maybe then it wouldn't be that cool i don't know there's some similarities i feel like in um uh in provoker in um yeah and Chino's son's band. Mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Like there's, there's some, um, some similarities, certainly not uh, in across the board, but right. Right. But they don't come up in the Spotify. No, Spotify need to fix their algorithm. Spotify. Yeah. Have, yeah. Their algorithm, dog. yeah. I just, uh, yeah, I think, you know, it's probably just based on listeners and a lot of our listeners are 
Deftones fans, you know, totally. yeah. um, which, which makes sense. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it, it sort of is. It is what it is, right? Yeah. 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 That's cool. Yeah. Well, apart from that, then um, can you offer me any recommendations of just, I know it's putting you on the spot and it's sort of a loaded question, but anything that, um, uh, that you think people should spend uh, a little bit of time with? Three things. Okay. Um, uh, I really like this guy, Street Fever, um, who I've actually become friends with, you know? Um, and I remember a friend of mine sent me a video of his and I saw the video and I was thinking like, I get a, I, I, cause I know a lot of music, like me and Chino will both know a lot of music. And it's almost like when somebody sends us something that we don't know, it's almost like a diss. Word. We're like, oh, I can't believe that motherfucker sent me some shit. I don't know. Like, it's kind of like that. Like we feel a little bit like, cause we feel like we, we, you know, we, we kind of, we, you know, we, I'm always trying to find new music. I was going to ask, Always. how do you find a the find the music, find the time to look for the music, and then also find the time to listen? Oh man, I I I try to find music all the time. Like like I just, it's always like the curated like playlist, but not the Spotify playlist. It's always just some kid that all just right. makes this playlist, and it's just the shit that he likes. Those are the best ones. It's not the people that are being paid to make them. So it's like those. Uh, I'll go like if I like a band or whatever or a project, a lot of times I'll go to similar artists and then I'll just or playlists with this artist and it always pick the most popular playlist, you know, like the one with the most likes on it. So I'll go through that playlist and I'll, I'll find other shit and then, you know, so on and so on. But I think that, um, yeah, so I found uh, Street Fever, like this guy sent me this video. And I was like, this is cool. It's a really well-made video. And it's just some dude who's just super talented. Um, you know, mostly his, his music is just, it's just like dark electronic shit. Right. Um, but he has this whole visual thing that I'm, I'm very much into the, I'm into projects that everything's in line. The music has got a vibe and the visuals just match the vibe and, awesome. and everything's, you know, it's not like the music's going to be dark and it's going to be this whole dark thing. And then you're going to see a photo of the guy and he's wearing like, billabong shorts or something and you're like bro come on man couldn't you put a pair of jeans on or something like some slacks come on i'm very much into like just, just streamlining everything so um so i like him um i was actually going to say provoker where <laughs> you said that they're they're one that i've really like i've been listening to a lot and it's not even because chino's kids in the band it's just like i just think they make cool stuff and it's it's definitely very 80s influence but it just it's to me it just sounds honest and it's rad that kids are making this kind of music uh it's got imperfections about it which i love um and then yeah i don't know uh number three does it have to be music no not at all it could be anything it could be anything food. It could be food it could be an article that you read once it could be a, a movie that you love it could be um a it could be like practice yoga. Somebody said, brush your oh. teeth, floss your teeth. It could be literally anything uh, in the world. All right. Well, I will say not to get too fucking hippie on you, but uh, meditation uh, is very important to me. Um, I've only been doing, I've been doing it like probably three, four years now, but I feel like if like, it's one of those things where I'm like, I can't believe I lived this long without it. Really? It's what does it do for you? Um, I feel like many things, but I feel like uh, I can focus way better now. Like I started just learning about it, just but like, like started like like reading all the shit about David Lynch and how he's been practicing this thing for, you know, 30, 40 years, whatever. And he hasn't gone a day without doing it and like all this stuff. And I just sort of started seeing, you know, all these like people that like, Oh, Oh, I can't believe. Cause I always, you know, I always thought like meditation, oh, yeah, fucking hippie, like whatever, you know, you're out there in the desert and then, in a, you know, speedo, you know, holding your fingers up or what, you know what I mean? So um, I always sort of thought about it like that, but like, I just, I feel like I just, I focus better. Um, I, I deal with stressful situations like way better. Like right. I, 
um, even communicating with people, um, whereas more so if, if I, if somebody, I don't know, somebody said something to me that was offensive, like I might say something quick back to them and it might go too far, <laughs> you know, with the In response. There. And I yeah. think, um, now when those situations happen, I just, I think about it and I calculate a little bit more and then I go, okay, this is what I'm going to say. And I'm going to communicate it this way. It's going to be way better. Um, yeah, there's that. I, I just feel like, um, I, yeah, I just, I just deal with stressful situations way better. Um, and I just, I, something I would notice before too, this, this is kind of a weird thing, but I would really have trouble making eye contact with people when I would talk to them. And, and I don't really have that as much. And I, I think it's like, in a way I feel more confident. It's, it's weird, man. It's, it, you wouldn't think of it like it, that it does that much, but it's really where, you know, the thing is, it's like, we're never, uh, as humans, we're never sitting in a place unless we're sleeping and not thinking about anything. Mm. Like, and I always say, like, even if you don't do meditation, like whatever, even if you can sit somewhere for 20 minutes, twice a day, whatever, 15 minutes, twice a day, and sit there in silence and not have a thought. I mean, that's pretty crazy if you can do that. I mean, it I, sounds impossible. That, that's amazing. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's just, it's just been great for me. Um, sometimes I feel like, sometimes I feel like before, I, like if it's in the e like early evening and I'm going to, I'm going to meditate, like I'll feel so tired and then I'll meditate for 20 minutes and I'll feel like I took sometimes, not every time. Sometimes I'll just feel like I just took the best nap of my life wow. and I'm just so energized and I'm like, ah, I got to wait till I go like crush some shit now. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's, it's been good for me. I mean, you know, uh, you know, I, when I went to like, when I went to like the, you know, first go to like learn how to do it, you know, cause it's like, you have to go to like a person to do this thing. Yeah. I would imagine. So it doesn't seem like something I could just turn on. No, no. So, and they, it was, it was crazy. Cause like, I was like, oh, was, was just, you know, cause it was like, I went to, cause I'm in LA. Like I went to the David Lynch foundation to like learn it. Um, and basically they were like, I thought it was going to be like this whole thing. They were going to try to sell me a bunch of shit. Like I thought it was like, you know, who knows this is a weird cult. I don't know. And they like, basically like came in there, like, you know, it was like, you know, probably six other people. And they were just basically like, yeah, this thing um, here, you know, this is what it is. If you want to take the class, you know, it's, it's, it's fairly inexpensive, like really. And they're like, and it works. And that's, that's all, but pretty much that's all we have to say. Like it works. If you do it, it works. They're not like it works for some and it doesn't work for others. They're like, no, it works. And like, we're not trying to sell you. If you don't want to do this, it's fine. Like, but like, and I, and I, I like, I kind of dug that, you know, I was just like, cool. It's like, yeah. you know, because they're saying, you know, they're, and they're, they have all this, like, you know, not to get super into it, but they have all this like scientific, like proof about it, that like it, it does so many things like, and it's, it's, and it's like their foundation is like so great because when you pay to do the, 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 the class, I mean, at the time it was like a thousand bucks. But it's like five days that you go for an hour and but it's also a, a it's 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 a tax donation because they're a nonprofit and they take i think they take 60 percent of your money and they teach it to uh veterans and and, oh, and, dope. and 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 kids in like inner city schools oh wow like so it's it's actually like it's it's amazing it's like it's such yeah. a great foundation and it's like so I did that. I, I, I went and, you know, I went and did it. And then like, you know, on the fifth day, they like, they like give you your mantra or whatever. And, and then they teach you how to meditate. And bro, the first time I did it, I felt like I was on the best drugs ever. Wow. It was cra like, I didn't expect that at all. It hit me. Like, I felt like I was falling, but like so gracefully, like it was wild. And I came out of it and I was just like, I thought dude just like gave me mushrooms or something. Like, I don't know. It was like, but I just felt like, wow, this is great. You know? 
Oh man, that's so awesome. And then, uh, and then after doing it, it was weird. Like here's, here's for how I really knew. So after doing it a couple of years, uh, and this is kind of relating to this podcast, <laughs> uh, me and my wife went down to, uh, the Deftones festival thing they do, you know, in San Diego. Yeah. Yeah. The one that I'm hoping crosses eventually shows up on the bill. I know. Uh, yeah. That'd be dope. Um, so, you know, we got a hotel like right there by the, by the venue and Gino's like, Hey, can you guys, um, if you guys come down the venue, I, I'll, I'll give you guys your passes or whatever. So make sure you guys are good. And, and, um, my wife was just like, Oh, I'll, I'll go get him. Like, I'll, you know, cause I think I was like taking a shower or something. So like, I'll go get him. She goes down there and he's, and, and, um, was like kicking it with him. He's like, he's like, Hey, what, yo, what's up with Sean? She's like, what do you mean? He's like, he just seems way different now. Like, and she's like, oh, what, what? Like, like, she thought it was like a bad thing. He's like, he's like, no, he's just like, he just seems so like, I don't I can't remember what he said, but he's like, he seems so clear. Like, he seems so, <laughs> he said some shit was kind of offensive. He said some shit like, he's just way easier to be around. <laughs> so he said something like that. And I was like, and, and then he's like, he's just like, he's just like, he's like different, but it's like, he's like, it's not weird. It's just like, I, he's like, I noticed. And she's like, whoa, you know, cause she's, sees me every day so you know and then and then you know she told him or whatever but like but like i was just like well that's 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 a trip like that's cool people, that you can hear that you know what i mean from somebody else to have that you know to hold yeah, that yeah. mirror up so to speak you know what i mean yeah no, yeah because it's like you know happier. I don't, I, yeah i want to be a you know i don't know i want to be i think everyone should want to be a, like improve themselves in any way they can it's not like too stressful and it's really it's not hard for me. It's like, yeah. I, I do it twice a day. I get it when I do, I do it when I get up and then I do it in the evening. You know, it's like, dude, that's what's up. That's a gem for me. Honestly, I, I mean, I've been in therapy now for like, uh, um, two years since, yeah. you know, sometime in the middle of the pandemic when the fit yep. was really hitting the shan, you know, and it was just like, yep. it hasn't come up once meditation hasn't come up, you know, with the two little yeah, kids I got, they don't give me time to, you know, to, to create the space for a thought, let alone the absence of thought sounds like wildly yeah, it's, appealing. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. I mean, and I'm, I'm not even saying like, cause you know, the one I do is TM like transcendental meditation, but yeah. like, you know, there's all sorts of different ones. It's like, I'm not saying this one's better or whatever, but like you found the one that works for you. Yeah. Because I mean, cause some people will do, they do like the calm app and shit. And I'm like, bro, I'm like, I'm trying to get away from my phone. Like, I don't yes. want to, I don't want my phone to be around, you know, like I, I, cause as soon as I open up the calm app, I might go, Oh, there's Instagram right next to it. And there's fucking TikTok, and there's, you know, whatever. And there's my text messages. And it's like, and then by the end, I'm like, Oh, I just spent 20 minutes and I didn't even start yet. You know? Yeah. I can identify with that wholeheartedly. <laughs> no. Yeah. My wife's on that calm app. I'm like, Hey, calm schmom. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Hey, if it, if it works for you, it uh, works. That's cool. I'm just hating. I'm like, just being a hater. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I get it though. It's just like, but like, yeah, I was just like, man, I, I, I couldn't believe it. I was, I was very skeptical, you know? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in. I dig that. I dig that. Um, man, this has been an incredible couple of hours. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. You might have to have part one and part two. <laughs> nah, they, the, the people are going to get down. this. The people are just going to get it. The people are going to get it and they're going to yeah. be blown away. They're, I haven't, you know, prefaced or suggested that this conversation might happen. So, um, yeah. I'm hoping that yeah. it will come off as a total surprise. I and, and just, I, don't, I don't think I said anything that's, uh, no, do you want to say you, some, some wild shit? There's, there's, we're still recording. You can say no, no. I, I mean, I don't even think I said anything that was like fucking crazy clickbait. Like, Oh, I can't believe he said that. Like, you know, no, so, I'm not trying to put that out there. This, this podcast is really the, the goal is to, for it to be a celebration of my favorite band and yeah no and i think that's i think it's awesome that you do it man i, I really do i think it's thank you i appreciate you know, obviously it obviously you don't have to you're not getting no it's you know, this is, <laughs> it's funny my my boss uh you know they were they were trying to like uh, uh sell a sponsorship but they were just sort of tossing it in like it because uh you know working in radio they were uh you know they try to get you to do endorsements and shit or whatever and they were and yeah. i was like they were like, oh, well, you're, um, you're, I was like, well, is there, what's like, what is it? What's the product? What, what would be, what would I get 
paid or whatever. They're like, oh, no, it was just something we just, you know, you're already doing it. And I'm like, I'm already doing it. Like, you don't even know what it takes to put this thing together. Oh, yeah. to and they made this uh, like comparison to like, well, the morning show podcast or whatever. And I'm like, yeah. that's just their show. I'm literally I'm I'm trying to like do the Lord's work here. Like I'm trying to find out history. Yeah. I'm trying to contact people who have the love. Like is like yeah. this isn't this is important to me. It's not just a toss on. Like so, um, and that really is my 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 point is that like this is massively massively meaningful to me. It's been the most meaningful uh, thing that I've done professionally. So for you to be a part of it yeah. and contribute to it is is yeah. I'm, I'm I mean, for so me, it's, it's like for me, I'm you know at the end of the day, I'm I'm still a music fan and I listen to podcasts and to this day when i hear a podcast and i'll do a screen record of, of a certain section of the podcast and send it to my friend i'm like man this this shit hit me hard man when, That's when, homie, when homie said this like oh man like you know like you know and it might be just like another producer or it might be a, an artist and it'd be like you know going through some hard times or whatever and it's just like man that that like i remember i listened to um I've actually listened to this one twice because it was that good. Was the uh, uh, Trent Reznor did a, a podcast um, with a girl who I know her. Uh, I can't, can't remember what's, what, what it's called, uh, but that one is so good. It was like, man. It was, was it something that he said that was uh, that spoke? There to was you? there was something that um, there was one thing he said that was like. I fucking related to it so much. It, he said at some point when he was going into the studio every day and he was not making anything and he was like uninspired or he said something like about that. He was going through a block or something. And he was like, and I would literally rewire the entire studio just to feel like I did something. And I was like, <gasps> uh. I was like, that's me. I've been through that. Um, but yeah, but like, you know, just shit like that. I mean, I, I'm a, I'm a, at the end of the day, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fan of music, of new music. Like I, I always want to hear new stuff. Like I want people to send me stuff. It's like, I get excited, you know, like, yeah. but so like, I don't know. I, I feel like things that I've said here, like I've, I haven't, I haven't told any, like I haven't told these stories before. Cause really, I don't really have people to tell them too but you know but uh my wife will just be like oh yeah cool cool you story got, bro. you got one here you can come back yeah, yeah. anytime no but anytime. I, I think i think it's cool for people to hear this stuff you know i mean yeah uh you know obviously i've, I've known dudes forever and you know i got i got much love for them and they've been through so much shit you know like recently and even years ago like you know with the whole chi thing and it's like that shit ain't that shit ain't easy, man. You know, and especially like all the pressure of of you know swapping out members and fucking all that shit. It's like you know, especially when you have like such a critical fan base that thinks they know everything. You know, at some point though, that's got to be like I don't know, inconsequential, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I it, you know, I will say this about the Sergio thing. Um, I do think they should have said something before he had the, 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 the chance to say anything uh, because he made them look really bad. I, I think, um, does it affect them that much? Probably not only in the small circle of like, you know, kids that, you know, think they know everything. Sure. Um, but I know, I mean, I don't, I don't, I know, I know that whole situation. I mean, I, I don't think he was treated well. And, you know, like you can't just come into a thing and expect to be an owner in it. I, I don't think that's, you know, I do think they should have said something. That's the only thing I think they did wrong, you know? Sure. Uh, and, and then it got to a point where like, it was just too late for them to say anything. Hmm. But Interesting. yeah, yeah. I just, you know, I just, yeah, I, I think, um, I think he pulled what he pulled at a very bad time. Like about wanting about demanding to be a band member. 
at the True. time that he did that, it was very just they were at a weak point, and I think he knew that. In terms That's, of because that it was mid pandemic, right? I mean, or mid pandemic, it whatever was whatever mid pandemic it was, is. It was also yeah, I know. It it was it was mid pandemic, but it was also when they knew about the whole Steph situation. Like, you mean in terms of like his, um, his unwillingness not, to get vaccinated, wasn't going to travel, or wasn't for a while. It was wasn't going to play a show. Word, just like not at all. Yes, but not. I'm not quitting the band. You know, and and then pretty much two days after that. Sergio came with that. Oh, Lord. Why didn't he want to play any shows at all? Just uh, uh, like you know, apprehension or? I, I think he's he's got some, you know, obviously the dude's been through some shit, like with the whole being at that club where all that shit went down. Right. You know, and then I think in the pandemic, I think um, as a lot of us were like, we just got lonely. And some people get lonely, might smoke a ton of weed, might go on YouTube and might start to think some things i don't know like the thing is like when i'm whenever i'm around stefan now like when i've been around him he's the same dude like yeah it so it, it, you know he's the same dude but he's he's got his certain beliefs which is like i don't know that's that's him like sure i, I can't i can't really judge a person like that you know sure but i think the whole thing was just was really poor timing on Sergio's part, you know, I guess uh, I certainly didn't understand or even venture to guess that Steph would have been, um, you know, that reluctant to, like you said, just play a show that, that, that never crossed my mind. So yeah, I can see how the timing of that was. So it, so it, so for me to see that from a distance, I'm like, Oh, okay. He saw a chance to be like, Oh, I'm going to get, you know, and I don't sure. know if that's the truth, but man, it's very looks that way to me. Um, and that's just not cool. And it doesn't do them any favors to like air him out in that way either. No, because if they, if they, you know, cause I talk, you know, I, I think that if, if they say something about it way after the fact, he said all this shit, then it's just bringing more attention to him. And like, dude, dude's been on how many podcasts now? Like a few, yeah. Come on, like not, not this one. <laughs> yeah, I know. I see that. I'm coming for it. No I'm kidding. Um, but like, I just, you know, I I don't. I just not cool, you know. And I don't know. I mean, it's 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 hard for me because like those are those are my friends, and if they're not gonna say something, it's like, I feel like oh, I'm gonna fucking say, you know like. That's why sure. I had to I had I had to tweet out something back then when I was like I tweet out a picture of that. It's like that meme of that lady squinting her eyes trying to like look for something yeah 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 i don't know you know i was like like me trying to <laughs> trying to look for any deftones fans who know what the fuck they're talking about because like yeah. all these people were saying to him like bro you don't know what you're talking about man you don't know you don't know what i mean they're they're a business they're a like they're a corporation yeah. like it's like you can't just i don't know yeah it's not like <laughs> dude was not getting paid well and that's why I guess I was um, curious why uh, it sort of seemed like, I, I don't know, it was sort of, it sort of felt like the delays in touring and everything were sort of laid at Steph's feet. You know what I mean? Like it was, yeah. this dude is smoking too much weed and we don't really, we don't yeah, know. What's I don't, going on I don't him, think it was uh, in then, the end. I don't think it was so much about him. It was all the, all the, all that stuff was going on. And then, you know, uh, yeah, it just, it just, it just, I could, un like, here's the thing I'll say. I could understand him wanting to be a part of the band. I get totally. that. Yeah. Why not? Why not ask for it? But the timing of it, not cool. Um, yeah. And also, I, I will, I will add one more thing. It's maybe a little bit petty, but I can promise you that she did not play Fenders because of Sergio. Cause I saw him say that and I'm like, bro, that ain't, that is not true. Like, like, how can you say that about something? I mean, he also just said some kind of just not cool stuff about like stuff that people shouldn't really, who, who knows if it happened, but stuff that people shouldn't know. 
Yeah, there were things that uh, like particular about him, um, like Chino asking him to join the band. Yeah, that, like that. I was like, bro, even if that did happen, which it did not, uh, like. What kind of revisionist I, history is this to share? Yeah, I'm like, bro, that is not cool to say that. It felt uncool, but, yeah. Yeah, so anyways, I mean, I you know, I got nothing against the guy. Like it, it, it is what it is. But like that, those are just things that I was like, that's, that's kind of not cool, man. Like, it, yeah, you just don't yeah. do that. Yeah, I guess the the like you said, the fact that they never said anything, and then that time escaped them. Um, yeah, that that left a lot of people wondering, and um, the absence of that closure probably has allowed for those feelings to like just continue to yeah, circulate yeah. And and I, and for I, people I, to make the wrong assumptions yeah and i understand that like you know whatever I, you know people were upset about you know they bought vip tickets and if he's not going to be you know it's like what i mean i get it that but come on man like, yeah well that's why i say like at some point all the fan shit has to be inconsequential you know what i mean it's because like a lot of people are just griping to gripe i saw somebody like bitching about um what are all the t-shirts why do all deftones t-shirts shrink when you, yeah. when yeah, like, you, you give stop people, drying them bitch you get, yeah you give up you give people something to bitch about it's they're just gonna like, do it they're gonna do it yeah i mean like you know when i'm like and then people can say that shit all day long about crosses and i i i see it and i read it and i'm like bro i don't give a shit if you think our t-shirt's too much money like you're not paying for our music like Word. Do you think we're Word. getting paid off streams? Yeah. My, wife, right. lo- my like, wife loves her slides, by the way. I would like to. Uh, yeah. Know. Yeah. yeah my I'm wife like, loves oh, her slides. I can't believe there's that much. It's like, bro, what do you think bands live on these days? Yeah. Like, Word. Come on, man. Like, it's like, I don't know. I'm just, I'm sort of like, if I, if I like, you know, a band or something and, and if I see enough to where like, oh, I want to see what merch they have and they have cool merch, then, I, w- I want to buy something you know hell yeah hell that's, yeah that's how it should be and i don't i don't ever think like oh that, i can't believe that's not much money like what what do they get off doing that it's like i mean come on man and and I, like i feel like people don't know like enough people don't know how um even on tour like venues take merch cuts and like oh yeah Big like time. the realities of that stuff is it would be wildly yeah i mean that, I that's think. i mean to me that's the stuff that needs to change is yeah that kind of shit because it's like man really they're gonna take fucking 35 percent like how, and then people, how is and then, that even cool and then people are bitching about the price of the t-shirt it's right like, yeah well, dude like and they gonna... point to the band on the t-shirt yeah not the venue yeah, that's, yeah. yeah it's like i don't know man i mean nobody not that many bands are making a killing you know these days you know yeah. but and like deftones might be doing well but like they've been doing it for a while yeah yeah, yeah like they've earned it you know? yeah totally yeah i i w- one more question if uh yeah. if i may about the the sergio um uh, departure yeah um you think they didn't say anything just because the time got away from them or why do you think they because the, I, w- I was thinking back like i don't remember them announcing like that he was coming to the band sort of similarly like there wasn't some announcement yeah that fred was joining the band yeah, to tour. yeah. like the um, lance announcement was the aberration yeah yeah um is it just not their style to 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 do that or was it just like i think it's part of, it's probably part of just their style um in a way i can't picture them making a statement like that like anybody like oh you know i can't picture them making one of those like you know very like typical statements we wish you the best we've part yeah, yeah. Of, you know like we wish you nothing but the best it's like come on you, no you don't but even management like management doesn't like take just do that i, I guess yeah. that's sort of like throwing that at management but yeah i mean uh yeah i think that uh i probably i i would think that time just got away with them you know and as i mean i think i think i talked to chino like the, the the day after sergio came out with that first announcement or whatever and he's like I call him. We were, talk, we were talking about some other shit, and he's like, "Did you see your boy wilding on on the internet?" And I already knew what he was talking about because like people had sent me that video or whatever, and, I, and they were like, oh, "I can't believe this!" Like whatever. And then even like some of my close friends, like people that I know, were like, "Yo, they fucking did Sergio dirty." I'm like, "Bro, you have no idea what you're talking about. Like, what yeah. are you what are you talking about? Like, 
Um, but yeah, he was just like, you see your boy wild. And I was like, oh, and he's like, I was like, you, I'm like, you, you guys going to say, you guys going to say something, right? You're going to make it. He's like, he's like, fuck no. Like, <laughs> it's like, it's, he's like, uh, he's like, I think, I think they were more just upset. Um, well, like how he did it, you know, to even like probably give him more attention. Mm. Cause then it's like, if they say something, then then he's probably going to say another thing. And it's just like a, a back and forth. And it's just like, in a way, I think they, they should have said something before, but since he did it, I think it's better that they just didn't say anything. Sure. Cause it would have just probably made it more than it needed to be. And mm. I, you know, I think everything on the internet these days is so short lived. It's, Word. it doesn't have much of a lifespan. Like if, if, you know, if something, if something, if, if somebody says something about, you know, a, a certain issue and it's like a big deal, then two weeks later, it's not really, it's just, there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's in the wind, totally in the wind. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah well, that's, um, that's really insightful. And um, I appreciate you sharing that with me. And that concludes season three. I want to express my enormous gratitude to Sean Lopez for this insightful, fun, just awesome hang. Thank you, Sean. I feel like I learned a ton. And two years into doing this podcast to continue to learn new things about Deftones is just such a cool thing. I can't wait to do it again. And I'd like to line up more conversations uh, with you for next season. I think our experiences as fans going to shows, meeting the guys, like those things are truly special. So uh, I would love to spend more time talking to you. So if you have a great story about Deftones that you want to share, hit me up. I'm at Woodbra on Twitter and Instagram, W-O-O-D-B-R-U-H. I am always down to hear a great Deftone story. And that's where you'll find out when season four is going to start. Till then, hope to see you at Dia de los Deftones this fall. Thank you for listening to Deftones, and thank you for listening to Change in the House of Pods. <laughs>